Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's the series opener of this border battle between the Minnesota Golden Gophers and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Wishing a happy Easter weekend to Hawkeye fans across the country. Minnesota enters at 10 and 10 on the season and is opening its conference slate with this trip to Iowa City. Legendary Gopher head coach John Anderson will be retiring at the end of the season, completing an incredible 43 year run at the helm. Like many Northern teams, Minnesota has spent a majority of their season away from home. They are an even 500 six and six on the road this season. Iowa clinched its opening series of conference play with a Sunday winner over Purdue in West Lafayette. After a canceled midweek, Iowa should be well rested, but hopefully not rusty following a pair of strong performances at Purdue. Brody Brecht gets the start for the 13 and 10 Hawkeyes today, and he's seeking his first win of the season. It's the series opener today from Banks, Minnesota and Iowa, the Golden Gophers and the Hawkeyes on Easter weekend in Iowa City with first pitch coming in a bit. Iowa took two of three from Purdue last weekend in West Lafayette, winning the final two games of the series beginning uh, on Saturday. A couple of highlights from the winner on Saturday. Two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. The pitch to Cop. ground ball right side through into right center field. Here comes Nelson, waving Petey. He'll score with ease. Two-nothing Hawks. Davis Cop. yes. Based on the angle to second base, we'll have a look at it here. Seegers, he's got it. He'll throw to second for one on to first. Double play. You called it, John. Here comes the 0-2 from Jack. Lined into right. Wilmus on the run. Ben got it. Great catch by Benny the Jet out there in right. And Purdue leaves him loaded. Jack Young again gets out of the jam. Hits it in the air, deep to center. Huxdorf's got a long run. Kyle still running, and he made a basket catch over his head. Huck, Kyle the kid, yes. Say. Here's the pitch from Detay. Lined into left, Peterson moving back. Sam's got it for the third out. Game over, Hawks win, four to three. Iowa evened the series with that win over Purdue and then clinched the three games set with the Boilermakers with a 9-6 victory over Purdue on Sunday. Huge opportunity for the Hawks now. Down 2-1 to one in the fifth. Top of the order, here's Andy Nelson. Corners in for Purdue. First pitch. Andy drives it deep to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Andy Nelson into the Purdue bullpen. Hawks lead. Boom. Boilermakers making some noise. Here comes the full count pitch from Whitlock. Runners take off. Swing and a miss. Whitlock, hook, line, sinker. Got him. Runners take off. Andy rips it to third. Through. Down the line and left. Here comes Wilmus. Here comes Seegers. Two RBI double. Andy Nelson. 2-2. Two, two. 
hit well into center. Kyle turning, running. Kyle sprinting. Kyle diving. Kyle making the play. A diving catch angled towards the track in left center. And Kyle the kid does it again. We'll go again at one and two. Young comes set. Here's the pitch. Call third strike. Jack Young strikes out the side and slams the door shut on the Boilermakers. Dotted him up with a fastball. Maybe had a little chat with the Purdue dugout. Well done, Hawks, to bounce back from just probably the worst showing of the year on Friday night to come back and win the first Big Ten series. Very nicely done. Iowa derails Purdue, throws the Boilermakers off the tracks, and wins the finale 9-6. to six. Great start to the uh, Big Ten season for the Hawkeyes. Look to keep it going with the opener with Minnesota coming up in just a few minutes. Following this break, John will talk with relief pitcher Drew Durmer right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, 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 coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pre Game. I'm here with Drew Dermer. Drew, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So, I guess we'll start with it. We'll start with the easy stuff. How would you get to Iowa? What what brought you to Iowa City? It really it really just started to take off my sophomore year. I just started working way harder than I previously did, and then I just kept kept throwing, kept hitting some big numbers, and then that's when my scouting really took off and that's when I finally got offered by Iowa and I just really just felt it just felt like home here just all the players were super nice all the coaches just great people and I just really belonged here and I, I love it here pretty good just an easy trip for you for you and your family to get down the interstate too right mm -hmm. yeah so you know, we were talking I, I've said on the air a few times you're kind of my you're my inside source on on ball stuff but yeah, yeah. when you and I were talking one day you said uh, you know Obviously, you pitched in high school, but then played some outfield, too? Yeah, I did. It was, it was fun. It was fun. So, do you miss hitting now? Um, I do. Every, like, occasionally, I really miss it, but I really just, I like what we're doing here, and I just, I just love pitching way more than hitting, so I just feel way better about it. So, what's been kind of your growth path here so far, and, and what's your path then maybe to finish the year? Definitely... That's a hard question. <laughs> what have you learned the most in your two months, or well, in the two months of the season, and then your your since the fall? Definitely, what I learned more is 
I, I knew how to pitch, but when I got here, they definitely taught me how to, like, command, how to, like, where to start my pitches, where it ends up, and just, like, I just feel way more comfortable now that I'm here, just off the mound, and it just feels so much better here. So what is you go, you know, you've been on the mound a few times this fall, mm-hmm. what's, or I'm sorry, this summer, what are, what are you trying to do next, or, or what are you working on to, how, how do you make, how do you make Drew a better pitcher? Definitely, definitely starting off throwing more first pitch strikes because I tend to get behind in the count a little, a little here and there, and then it, it it doesn't end up in my favor. So I definitely just work harder on throwing strikes and throwing just getting outs early in count so I can stay longer in the game. It's amazing at this level if you're down 1-0 or 2-1, what happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> These guys can all hit a little. So uh, what do you do besides uh, what do you do besides baseball for fun? Um, hang out, hang out with some buddies in the dorm, and then I definitely, I play a little bit of video games here and there, but other than that, it's mainly just schoolwork. How's the transition been from, you know, obviously we, we spent five out of six weeks on the road. How does, yeah. how does that for, as, as a freshman, how does the schoolwork fit into it's, that? It's definitely, it's definitely tough, but I, I got used to it. I started getting like... I, I have tutors in some of my classes, so they really help a lot with getting my schoolwork done and just, like, following along in my classes. And it's definitely it was definitely tough at first, but now that it's been a few weeks, I've gotten used to it, and it's getting a lot better now. And you've got some baseball lineage in your family, right? Yeah, I do. Are you going to elaborate on that for me? <laughs> um, my, my dad, he played pro ball in, with the Madison Black Wolves. And then, unfortunately, he blew out his shoulder, so he had to stop playing. And then my uncle also, he also got played pro ball, and he also blew out his shoulder. So and they both, they both were pretty good ball players. And then they just, they just taught me everything I know now. And it just, it's it's helpful to have them like around so they can, well, they can help me out. Well, it's probably nice to me because obviously it's not always a straight up positive trip so mm-hmm. when things are great they probably help you and when things maybe aren't so great they probably can provide some balance to that yes, too yes they do yeah so what uh what do you think uh, what do you think of the team here you know i know obviously it's been a uh you know, kind of a tough opening road trip but it feels like mm-hmm. feels like the bullpen and part of what you're a part of is coming together nicely yeah. here at the end we're definitely we're definitely getting there started off shaky at first but i think i think now that we're settled in we're going to start dominating and just doing a lot better than we started off at well i think the key is you've said it and we said it a couple times that first pitch strike you know the more more of those you throw the better off you are yes yeah for sure all right i'm gonna let you go here and get back to uh get back to bp but all thanks right. for joining me thank you Hawkeye reliever Drew Dermer. We'll be back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image words from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you. Eight bushels per acre easier and much harder for rootworms in the competition. Pioneer brand Chrome products, field proven and ready for yours. Visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome. 
American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. The series opener on Easter weekend with uh, Minnesota. The Gophers in town. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a good bounce back. Good job to get the series win over Purdue last weekend. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, guys played really hard, and, and we played good baseball um, Saturday and Sunday. Pitching was still a little a little messy at times, but uh, we had some guys step up like Jack Young and Aaron Savory and Jack Whitlock, and um, you know, so that was that was a good sign. And then Ben Dete uh, was also very good. So that's that's um, a good sign as we head uh, deeper into conference play that the bullpen is is going in a in a better place. Uh, we got to get the starters going though. They're just all three are just giving up way too many free bases, and uh, we need to get them deeper in the game and. You know, we talked a little bit about that last week. It, it's really hard to cover the amount of innings uh, and, and win games uh, that we're having to cover right now. Uh, midweek was supposed to be at Illinois State this weekend, got rained out. So uh, the team well-rested? Any concerns about being rusty? Just your thoughts on, on that. Well, it could go either way, but um, definitely disappointed we didn't get a play because um, the previous two midweeks uh, went really well with the pitching staff, and I was wanting to see those guys on the road uh, against a good team and um, and get all those guys that didn't get in on the weekend and inning. Uh, but for the position players, probably not the worst time for this to happen. You know, five or six weeks on the road, uh, sleeping in your own bed, uh, not jumping back in a bus on Tuesday and driving three hours down, three hours back. Um, and that's what we're that's what we talked about was really getting rested get, you know getting back get our strength back uh take care of our schoolwork get caught up just feel a lot better about herself and, and and get ourselves uh ready to go good and strong ready for the for the stretch run here we got two weeks at home and and let's take advantage of yeah. it head coach of the Hawkeyes Rick Heller on our pregame show from Banks today okay the Gophers in town coach up uh, their head coach John Anderson retiring after the season 43 years yeah. at the helmet Minnesota talk about your relationship with coach Anderson oh, it's, it's it's um it's great it's, you know John's a good friend he's been a, a a big help to me over the years um you know when I first got my divi first division one job at UNI in 2000 and um you know we played them home and away every year non-con when I was at UNI and and John John is John is so much more than than just even you know the he is Minnesota baseball you know to, and forever will be you know to me you know almost 50 years there since 1974 and head coach for 43 and uh, but he he's a big voice in the Big Ten. He's a big voice uh, nationally in college baseball. He's been on so many committees with the best of the best that has ever coached since the 80s. Yeah. Um, the, the knowledge that John has, the experiences that John has, uh, and I'm not just talking like on the field stuff. I'm talking from a leader in our conference and a leader in our game. Uh, we're, you know, baseball's losing a big, big, a big voice and a big person. Uh, to me, you know, he's a mentor. He's a guy who's always helped me when I called and tried to learn the ropes in Division One. And when I got in the Big Ten, he was always there, uh, taking me through how things work and the things we needed to work on and change, uh, things to improve the league and improve the game and. Uh, you know, just advice when I needed it. I always, you know, leaned on John. So, you know, really appreciate that and and, and thank him for that. But, you know, he's a good friend. And it's just going to be a really, really sad feeling for me to look in that dugout, you know, next year and not see John over there. And, you know, he had a longtime assistant, Rob Fornasier, that was with him for, you know, 35 of those years and Rob's been retired now for probably four or five and I still I still look over and expect to see Rob you know so um, you know from that standpoint it's, it, it makes you look at your own you know career and where you're at and um, you know 
take every take every day and enjoy it as best you can. And but I'm happy for John. He's going to be able to spend more time here with his family, and he's in good health. And um, you know, he, he enjoys his time at the lake and golfing. Sure. And, uh, so I'm happy for him. Uh, you've got some pretty spirited battles with him over the over the years <laughs> while you've been here at Iowa, coach. Oh, lots of them, and <laughs> you and I too. And then we even played a, a big series when I was at Indiana State. Uh, when he had a, a big draft uh, in Wendell that went to the Dodgers high, and we had Sean Manaya, uh, and and it was the most scouts, it was the most scouts, uh, general managers, scouting uh-huh. directors wow. that I've ever seen at a game because it was uh, in the Metrodome, mm-hmm. and everybody knew they were going to play, and they were two real high-profile guys, and our guy, you know, Manaya at that time, they were talking possibly first pick in the draft, oh, wow. and and so. Uh, quite a game, uh, and, and and we ended up winning the game. Uh, and <laughs> Make sure you throw that in there. Coach. Well, but the worst the worst part was that Manaya tore his hip labrum oh. uh, in the game. Oh, no. And so uh, anyway, it was a you know I just think back of all the times we have played and, and had some really good games. They're ten and ten on the season, Coach. Uh, what do you see from John Anderson's squad this year? Um, you know, we talked last year that. <laughs> Uh, post-COVID, you know, they, they had a team before the COVID year that was a super regional team. Mm-hmm. Post-COVID, they, they they struggled. They had some things go haywire, didn't didn't go as well, um, and they, they, they took a step down, and uh, I felt like last year was a big step forward, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the quality of the kids that he had on that team and uh, how they played, and, uh, you know, they're, they're back to having, you know, really good arms like they had in the past. Uh, the Novotny kid who we're going to face tonight, the big left-hander beat us last year, uh, and then we were able to, to bounce back and, and, and win, win a couple games uh, on Saturday and Sunday. But this team is even another step better. Um, you look at their record at 10-10, and 10 and they played a tough schedule. Mm-hmm. They've been on the road uh, every week. Mm-hmm. They've only played one home game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've played Oregon State a couple times. You know, they've played some tough teams, and they've competed. Um, and I guess the best way to say it is, like, all three starters, from a purely stuff standpoint, are probably better than any of the guys we've seen this year, even Ole Miss, Georgia, Auburn. Okay. Uh, that's the kind of stuff they have. And they also have a stuffy bullpen, too. You know, the Clawson kid is a real arm mm-hmm. at, at the back end. They've got some other guys and a really good mix of lefties and righties in their bullpen. Mm-hmm. The position players are uh, an older, mature group, um, Mazinga Council, guys you've seen now for three years, uh, good leaders, um, you know, play for the right reasons, and they're playing hard. And, of course, with John's uh, retirement and this being his last year, I know they they want to be the team that, that, that goes out on a high note yeah. for him. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks today. Uh, okay, about uh, about your team, we'll start with Brody Brecht. You mentioned the starting pitching. Got to pick it up a little bit. Brody's going to be looking for his first win of the season today. Yeah, that's true, and that's that's – that's surprising, uh, but you know, like I told Brody, um, you know, there's nothing we can do about the past. All we can do is move forward and um, you know, try to win every time you go out. You know, just try to get better, just one pitch at a time, get better. Brody's had a little blip here for a couple games where he wasn't uh, wasn't himself, and I'm hoping that we we see the guy we saw the first. You know, three or four weeks when he should have had a bunch of wins, yeah. you know, and either didn't quite make it full five innings because of a pitch count, uh, but left the game with a lead, and then we blew the lead, you know, with bullpen problems or whatever it might be. Uh, but now it's back to him taking care of his business and hopefully getting us to the fifth or sixth where um, now a bullpen we feel confident can close yes. it out. Offensively, Coach, how are you? What's your approach with the offense today? Well, he. Um, He's a little different, you know, just with um, big, big sweeping breaking ball um, that we're going to have to lay off of a lot and not not chase, but hits with it 50 percent of the time. You know, it's not like you can just completely take it out of the mix. Uh, fastball 90, but he's he, his release point is, for example, his release point is two feet ahead of Brody's. Mm. So so his perceived velocity, though it's only 90, it looks faster and it gets on you. It's whippy and. Um, he can really get it in sometimes on the right-handers. Uh, he gets guys. Uh, he gets also gets the right-handers to chase that one up and away. It looks good, and then it it's got some ride to it, and it gets out of the zone. Um, does have a decent changeup too that you have to worry about. So, um, if you look at his numbers, they they're good, but it but it it's like there's one inning in there almost every start where you better get him. 
Okay. And some teams have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, last year we had it. We got three. We had a chance to get more. And then he settled in and shut us down. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we didn't we didn't get it done. And, and, and when we have that chance and that opportunity, uh, we need to cash in on it. Yeah. Feels like a maybe separation weekend uh, starting in the, in the conference. Uh, this is their first conference series, but for you, two and one, and, and you get a few home games in a row now. Yeah, we need uh, to take get off to a good of start. Yeah, that's what we need to do. And you know, uh, as you and I both know, it's not magic. You have to play well. And and sometimes, like Friday night last week, you run into a team that plays really well. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's. That was the challenge to the team is let's put three together. Let's see if we can put our three best games of the year together, best focus, best energy. Everybody's got each other's back, and let's go do this. And that's really the only way you can go about it. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Take it to the Gophers. Yeah, thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. Moments away from first pitch, Minnesota and Iowa. Coming up right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance, because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo on the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. We're moments away from first pitch of the series opener between Minnesota and Iowa. Head coaches meeting taking place around home plate right now. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Let's welcome in my color analyst, John Evans. John, it's been a while. We were robbed of that midweek because of the rain, but uh, we got all rested up, and good to see you this weekend. Yeah, did not have to uh, did not have to jump in the car and drive to normal Illinois, so that was uh, that was a good news, bad news sort of thing. Yeah, coach was a little disappointed that uh, the team didn't get the pitchers uh, a few more reps. I don't know if we share that same disappointment to drive over to Illinois State. Well, no, I, I'm entirely disappointed that the pitchers didn't get the reps. But. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not necessarily disappointed that we didn't spend six hours in a car on Tuesday. That's right. All right. Hey, we're at home this weekend. Three games with Minnesota. Uh, two and one weekend at Purdue. Let's keep the ball rolling. Hey, keep the ball rolling by by really playing good baseball. You know that was the idea. Uh, maybe it didn't. Uh, Friday wasn't wasn't really Hawkeye baseball last week, and, but Saturday and Sunday were good responses to that. And that's that's what needs to happen now. You need to. You know, we talked about it after Saturday's win. Is this team's been able to look really good in a game. Mm -hmm. Now you, now they look two in a row, and now you need to do it in a series and, and really string it together through the Big Ten season here. And Coach Heller talked about that in the pregame interview. He, he challenged the team, challenged the guys, let's let's go one, two, three. Let's get three games in a row. Let's really string things together. Now to do that, you got to win game one. And Brody Brecht will get the start for Iowa today on the mound. You know, and, and Brody's velocity has been down just a little bit. But, you know, see if uh, you know, we're, we're a little warmer today finally, so maybe that will help. Uh, you know, he's facing a, a, a good opponent um, in Tucker Novotny. You know, that was actually Tucker and, and Sunday's starter uh, were, the were the two starter or the two pitchers that combined to beat Iowa last year on Friday. So I will have to be have to be on their game, have a good approach. Um, they're, they're, boy, they're used to seeing left-handers, so nothing nothing new there at this point. So they'll just have to keep sticking with it, keep their approach, and maybe, as, as you heard Coach Heller say, maybe we can get Brody a little bit deeper in the game and, and take some take some early pressure off the bullpen on a Friday. Minnesota 10-10 and 10 on the season. This is their first uh, Big Ten competition 
uh, of the year. They were 18 and 34 last year. Iowa this year is 13 and 10, 2 and 1 in the Big Ten. The Gophers are 6 and 6 on the road. The Hawks are 7 and 0 at home. Let's go over today's starting lineups. We'll go first with Minnesota. Brady Council will lead things off, followed by Jake Perry and Weber Niels. Ike Mazenga is the DH. He'll bat fourth. Boston Merrilla bats fifth in left. Batting sixth is Jots, Josh Fitzgerald. 7 8 9, Chris Hokinson, Sam Hunt, and Jake Larson. For the Hawkeyes, defensively, as they're about to take the field, left to right on the infield, Raider Tello, Michael Seegers, Gable Mitchell, and Andy Nelson. In the outfield, left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, Ben Wilmus, and the catcher today is Davis Cop. He will be the battery mate of Brody Brecht. Starting lineups being announced as we speak. Great crowd on hand for this Friday afternoon matchup. It's overcast. It is mid-60s. There's a little bit of a breeze that, that makes it a little colder today. But the grandstand over to the right entirely full. And over to the left, there's quite a bit of maroon and gold, John. Quite a bit on both sides. We were a little oversold on how good the weather was going to be today. Yes. But, but uh, we, we've certainly seen worse this right. year, so we'll take it. Should be a good weekend uh, through and through this Easter weekend if uh, if you've got the time, make it out to Banks. Would love to see you, or else we'll have the full coverage for you the rest of the the rest of the weekend. With this series between Iowa and Minnesota. All right, the players are making their way out of their respective dugouts and headed to the line. We'll step aside for today's national anthem. Back right after this. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks, compared with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva Agriscience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva Agriscience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. National Anthem is complete at Dwayne Banks Field. Getting set for first pitch between Minnesota and Iowa. All right, John, Brody Brecht gets the start for the Hawks today. Looking for his first win of the season, as, as wild as that sounds. Yeah, 222 ERA, he's 0-1. Uh, and got, got hit around a little bit. Purdue was, Purdue took a, a different approach than what we've seen. You know, most teams are patient, maybe maybe walk a few times, let that pitch count go up, or at least make him you know, work deep into counts. Uh, you know, Bolton Jr. really set the tone as he swung at the first pitch, lined it into left field for a base hit, uh, and and you know really did what a leadoff hitter does. Said, hey, here's here's what we are, and here's what we're going to do. And the whole Minnesota team, they got they got three runs in the first inning there. They took advantage of an error later on to get three more. Uh, but, you know, Brody six starts, like I said, 0 and 1, two, 28 in the third innings, 20 hits, 12 runs, seven of those earned. Still walked 24, but strikes out 53, which I believe still leads the Big Ten, 185 batting average against. Uh, you know, so for him, it's you know. How many times can he throw strike one? You know, just just get ahead with, with his stuff. When he's when he's ahead in the count, he he's going to be unhittable by most teams. He'll face a Minnesota offense that, as a team, bats 273, which is ninth in the Big Ten. On base percentage of 378, slugging percentage 450 uh, for the Gophers. They they strike out a bit, 169 strikeouts on the season, but they have drawn 102 walks, and they average just under seven runs uh, per game. Weber Niels is.
probably their best batter by average at 338. He's also got 17 RBIs. Jake Perry is an extra base hit threat with seven doubles. And Chris Hokinson. He can drive the ball as well with 17 runs batted in. Got to watch out for Mazenga and Council. They've got some power, five home runs each. Council with some speed as well. Yeah, Council has six doubles on top of that. And, uh, you know, as you, as you might expect from, from a coach's kid, 12 walks and two hit by pitches to 16 strikeouts. So pretty even mix of, of walk to strikeout as well. Yes, Brady Council will be the leadoff hitter for Minnesota in just a moment. He's the son of Chicago Cubs manager Craig Council. How about that? I don't do the Cubs. Me neither. Not a, not a Cubs guy. We're, we're, a, we're a National League Central guy, but we're not a uh, we're not a Cubs guy. So you're a Reds guy, John. I'm a Reds guy. And I'm a Pirates guy. Yep. And I believe we're at the top of the standings right now, aren't we? You uh, and me, we both are. I believe so. Yes. yes. The now, Cubs are not. Now I'm seeing my, the, the one thing I have to be nice to the Cubs today, and so the one thing I, I, as I see, uh, as I see Cooper Tease running around down there. So remember last year I missed a uh, I missed a game or two as my uh, my, my good friend and my. Uh, uh, my coworker passed away last year with with pancreatic cancer, Brian Teese, and so he's a Cubs fan. So, since since he passed away, uh, it was it's a year ago today. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go easy on the Cubs today for for Brian. So. Take it easy on the Cubbies. Yeah. All right. A after that, they become fair game again. Yes. But we're gonna go easy today for him. All right. Series history between Minnesota and Iowa. These teams first met in 1892. Have a combined 313 meetings. The Gophers are out. In front 186 to 127 if you're keeping track at home well, and how about that too so let's talk about that for a second played baseball what 130 years john anderson's coached for a third of those 43 years he's coached. he's a third of the years they've played baseball and they've played a lot of baseball that's something else all right brody brecht on the rubber first pitch low and out ball one we're underway at 406 central time in iowa city One ball, no strikes to Council, the right-handed second baseman for the Golden Gophers. Pitch outside, ball two from Brecht. These teams met last year in Minneapolis, uh, had a doubleheader uh, the first game of the series, uh, the first day of the series, and then came back and finished things up. Iowa dropped the opener 12-3, to bounced back 7-2 to and 18-4 to to take the series over Minnesota. There's strike one from Brecht on the outside corner, two and one. Last time these teams played in Iowa City was 2022. Iowa swept Minnesota with a couple of nine to three victories that sandwiched a two to one win over the Golden Gophers. Fastball outside from Brecht, three and one to Council, who hasn't seen much to hit in his first at bat. Hey, missed with the three fastballs. First one was close. The next two have been a little bit more outside. Hit with the slider. See what he comes with here on the 3 1. The wind up in the pitch. Lifted in the air to left. It's carrying well. Peterson going back. He's at the track. He's at the wall. And he makes the catch right in front of the wall for out number one. Brody hung a slider. Got away with it a little bit. As I don't think Council quite hit the barrel. Just 94 mile an hour off the bat. And there's a pretty good breeze carrying the ball out that way. So you, you get one airborne, it's going to it's gonna blow toward the new wrestling facility and, and to the parking lot there beside Carver. Which is uh, strange, at least the past <laughs> a couple of years. Everything seems to be blowing in. But today, out and over to left. First Ooh. pitch outside from Breck to Jake Perry, left-handed hitter. He's their starting third baseman. Cop tried to frame that outside corner. It, it looked good, but one of those situations where Davis wasn't set up there, and so it, it fooled the home plate umpire. Get it right back there with a strike on the inside corner. 97 from Brody. That's a little bit more like it. Yeah, he's been you know, the first to council. He was 97, 98. So you know, just getting warmed up. It's kind of really exactly where you want to see him. A ball and a strike. The pitch from Brecht. That's over for strike number two. Perry is a good hitter for Minnesota. Batting 322. Started in all 20 games for Minnesota. One ball, two strikes. Brecht out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. That's the Hawkeye. Boy, gave him the gave him the splitter, and he really started to throw that a lot last week. Uh, and, and that was his best pitch last week. You know, his, his velocity was down on the fastball. He threw a lot of uh, 
threw a lot of splitters, and that one was a beautiful pitch right at the bottom of the zone. Two down in the inning for the Golden Gophers. First baseman Weber Niels comes up, right-handed hitter. Crowds the plate. First pitch from Brecht outside. Ball one. Three infielders on the left of the infield for Iowa. Mitchell, Seegers, and Tello. Andy Nelson all by himself over there at first. The wind and the fire from Brecht. Just outside, ball two. Every fastball he's thrown to a right-hander has been in that left-handed batter's box or to that to that batting line so just hasn't been able to hasn't been able to dot the outside part of the plate yet i think that's by design to work the outer half of the plate i'm sure it is but somewhere you're going to need to miss the other direction <laughs> uh, yeah again outside from brecht and he's falling behind three and out he'll take a lap around the mound and regroup he'll climb the back side and get back on the rubber brecht come set here we go with the 3-0 that's across three and one. He operates from the the first base side of the of the rubber. It took just a little bit off that fastball, 95, but still spotted it in the zone. Three one, swing and a foul tip. Deflected off a cop's glove, and he's worked back to a full count. We've seen this story before this season. Well, and you'd like to see him finish it now. You come back and do this. Just go ahead and finish it, as that was a good splitter there with three one pitch right in the zone. Almost like to see him throw the slider here. Full count pitch from Brecht. Here it is. Cold third strike. Throws him on the outside corner. Threw the splitter again. Man, what a great pitch there. Really a pitch he's turned into trust. And nice to get that three up, three down inning in the first. Couple of strikeouts for Brecht. We'll see Andy Nelson, Sam Peterson, and Raider Tello come to the plate right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Andy Nelson will lead off the Iowa first. Sam Peterson and Raider Tello to follow. If anybody gets on, Davis Kopp will see and at bat. Kyle Huxdorf bats fifth for Iowa today. The DH is Reese Moore, 7-8-9 for the black and gold. Ben Wilmus, Michael Seegers, and Gable... Mitchell pitching today for Minnesota tall left-hander this is Tucker Novotny 579 ERA on the year in six starts he's 0 and 3 28 innings 28 hits 18 runs have all been earned 12 walks 33 strikeouts opponents hitting 262 against him fastball will be plus or minus 90 he'll throw a slider and a change off that those uh, he doesn't tend to throw as many strikes there. You got to chase it and help him out there. So again, it's another one of those where can the Hawkeye can the Hawkeye hitters show that discipline to see fastball, hit fastball, and, and take some of those other pitches until you heard Coach Heller mention in the pregame. Can he throw them for strikes and can he do it consistently? How about Andy Nelson? He uh, in, in Big Ten play through three games. He's at, he's at the top of the list, batting 545, six hits and 11 at bats against uh, the Boilermakers last weekend. He takes ball one. He's having an incredible season uh, since he got into the lineup and since he's been at the top, he's currently batting 387. This is his 20th game of the year. Yeah, and give it to... Uh... 1-0 pitch, he takes for a strike just below the letters, one and one. Give it to our man Sam for the uh, for the slash line. The seven games since Andy's moved to the leadoff spot. 542, 667, and 
1,000 with three home runs, 11 RBIs, and 16 runs scored. Chased a high fastball there, one and two. And we will, of course, jinx him right now. Uh, yeah, I was worried about if I wanted to breach the subject. Right here, right now. That was a nice pitch from Novotny up above the zone. Here comes the one, two. Nelson hits it foul in the air over to the right. That'll get out of play. We'll do it again. Coach Howard talked about Novotny. He, he reaches so far forward by the time he lets go of it. Uh, the the uh, accelerated velocity or the sort of the advanced velocity metric uh, appears to be much quicker than what the, the gun might say. Yeah, it's just, you know, he's got that long frame. One, two, line drive up the middle, base hit. Sent it right back where it came from. Andy Nelson continues his hot streak with a single to start the bottom of the first. Took a pretty good fastball off the plate, and Andy just sends it 100 miles an hour right back up the middle. Came in 89, left 100. So, you know, Novotny got the win last year in the first game of the series. Six innings, five hits, three runs. He did walk four, but he struck out eight. Kept Iowa off balance the whole game, so he out -dueled Brody Breck last year. Novotny will go to the stretch now with Nelson at first base. The batter is Sam Peterson. First pitch, swinging and missing. Ooh, man, that was a heck of a cut by Peterson. He was trying to hit the scoreboard and left. Got the fastball he was looking for and probably in the place he was looking for. Just missed it. Nothing and one now for Peterson. Iowa starting left fielder. 0-1 pitch in the dirt. Nelson takes off for second. There's the throw. It is late. Nelson to second base. What a read from Andy there. That ball didn't really bounce that far away from the catcher there in uh, and Sam Hunt, and but he got a great read on it, and then Hunt kind of had to double clutch it as he picked it up, and Andy was able to get into second relatively easily. Andy read the downward angle, put his head down, and sprinted the second. He's in scoring position now for Peterson. The 1-1 one -one, fouled off over to the right. Hung the breaking ball, or the off speed at least, and Petey just couldn't quite time it up. And now it's 1-2. and two. Yeah, I think that was the changeup, not... It might have been a slider, but boy, not much movement on it, sitting up high. Ball that he could, I'm sure he felt like he could go get. The one-two, way outside. And Hunt will slide over and snag it. Good secondary lead again from Nelson. He was ready. If that ball snuck away at all, he was going to find his way to third. Decent gap in left center for Peterson. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Novotny. Line drive into left center. It's down for a base hit. Nelson's at third. They're waving him. He'll score. Sammy P's headed for second. Here comes the throw. Slides in. Safe. one nothing Hawks. Went back to that same pitch again. 79 mile an hour on the outside part of the plate. Peterson just destroys it. 105 off the bat. Center fielder makes a nice play as that was... That was Hokinson that got over to cut it off, but Petey's aggressive. He was full go all the way. Nelson scores easily, and Petey goes head first into second for a double. Nobody out, and Iowa already on the board. It's 1-0. Here's Raider Tello. Tello batting 380 for the Hawks. Right-handed hitter, first pitch. Fouled it off to the screen. Top the, the first six hitters in the in the lineup for Iowa are up over 300. That's that's a pretty good uh, stretch there. No balls and a strike to Tello with Peterson at second base. The pitch from Novotny at the knees called a strike. Good pitch. A really good dot on the outside part of the plate. Novotny's done a nice job keeping the ball on that outside part of the black. Just Hawkeye hitters so far have been really good. See if Tello can make that same adjustment. <laughs> Exceptional with two strikes. Here's the 0-2. In the dirt. Ball one. Yet yeah, Nelson and Peterson each with a two strike base hit. And it's interesting because, you know, the Hawkeye scouting report was, you know, how does he, does the right hander, want to move off the plate a little bit? Try and move to second. It gets into center field. Peterson's headed for third. He'll get there. Boy, that was a whole heck of a mix up there. I think he got caught on what the move was. Didn't even try to throw it hard, but then just didn't throw it very accurately to a second baseman covering him. At the very least, throw it to where the second baseman is rather than where you think he's going to be, especially if you're really not trying to get him.
But then Hawks will take the, the Hawks will take the extra 90 feet. He turned towards first base. He rotated that way, which makes it a harder throw. Yeah, it, yeah an inside move for the left-hander was was a little strange that way. But one two to Tello fouled back. Yeah, if you don't get your hips all the way through, then you're you're throwing with an open. Uh, delivery and he, he threw it to the left of the bag at second and the second baseman who was covering had to cross Peterson and he never got to it. Yeah, just never got on. Like I said, you just at that point you go ahead and you know, Peterson was basically standing on the bag. So you just make sure you hit the second baseman in the chest, but didn't do it. One, two, right back up the middle. Base hit for Raider Tello. Here comes Peterson. He'll score. RBI single for Raider. Two nothing Hawks. Knocks Novotny's glove off and you can just see the frustration oozing off of him right now. That'll send Sam Hunt out, and actually the whole rest of the infield are going to come in too to try to calm him down because it's Friday. Yes. <laughs> you, you get, whatever whatever you're doing, however you're feeling, you got to go. And, and so they'll have that quick mound chat, RBI single from Tello, and dream start for the Hawkeyes. Great start. 2 nothing Iowa. few hits for the Hawks. Three in a row. Here comes Davis Cobb. And that was 106 off the bat. So again, your Hawks aren't, aren't just making contact. They're hitting the ball hard. And right up the middle, just right on it too. Uh, Peterson was able to pull his a bit. And now it's Davis Cobb, Iowa's catcher, right-handed hitter. Great addition to the program. As Cop takes low and out for ball one, Iowa has really struck gold the last couple of years with with impact transfers in their in their graduate year. Well, you, yeah, you last year with with Brennan and, and Brennan Derigi, and then now Davis Cop. I mean, just great personalities, great characters to have in the team. Navani comes set. Here comes the 1-0 pitch, hit in the air to right. Right fielder Fitzgerald is camped underneath it, and he makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Got under that one just a little bit. Sent it more up in the air and like I said, in a little unusual twist. The ball's not really gonna carry out to right this time. You hit it there, it's pretty much gonna hit up into that wall of wind and stop. You gotta try to pull it off the scoreboard today. Prime candidate for that is Kyle Huxdorf in the box now with Tello at first base. Two nothing Iowa in the first. Novotny will try and move over to first base. Tello will dive back in there because of course you have to chase Raider Tello back. You know, we, we made a joke about that last series, but it might be a, a season long thing. Everybody wants to keep Tello around the bag. Wear, wear the guy out, make him, <laughs> make him dive back enough. First pitch to Huxdorf, sliced foul over to the right. That'll get out of play. And that was a good fastball in from Novotny. He hasn't come inside very often that when he dropped Dropped inside, Huck was able to drop the bat down on it, but just fouled it off over toward the Jacobson building. Left fielder playing pretty deep out there, isn't he, John? There's not a lot of room behind him, that's for sure. A one, Huckstorf hits on the ground to second. This could be double trouble. Flip to second for one, on to first, double play. Two, Four, six, three for three the Gophers, hits, but one Iowa one gets two one runs one on three hits. One, one error for Minnesota, two nothing Iowa through one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona.
This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second inning, Iowa 2, Minnesota nothing. Brody Brett gets the opportunity to pitch with the lead in the early going. And I, interestingly enough, this is a little bit about what happened last year in the matchup. Iowa was able to get three. It was a, it was a couple innings later off Novotny. But Ike Mazenga is the batter, swings and misses to start as a bat. But then Iowa didn't finish them off when they had a chance. So that's the thing you kind of you kind of worry about there, the fly out and the ground into double play. You want to just see good at bats. But first you want to see Brody shut down Minnesota again this inning. Pitch is low to Mazenga, left-handed hitter. DH. He doesn't even step out of the box. He just stays in there the whole time. That's a refreshing uh, approach. 1-1 one, one from Brecht. Popped up. Shallow. Outfield. Over to right. It's actually Seegers behind the second base bag who will make the play in shallow center for the first out. Yeah, that's a little bit of that wind. You just hit the ball. kind of gets up in the air and kind of cut slices out Number there. 33. But yeah, no more Garcia Park killed Carolina. everybody with the, uh, with the whole take off your gloves things step out every time <laughs> he'd hate the pitch clock i'm not sure he could go through that routine with the pitch clock he'd have to make some adjustments <laughs> boston marilla takes strike one and basically it would be involved taking a strike somewhere in there as he's doing <laughs> yeah well that's a strike okay fine i still have to work my gloves oh one wave that and missed that dropped right off the table, didn't it? Really did, and that was, that was 90, so Brody's moving it up there after a 97-mile-an-hour fastball, then you throw that one on top of it. No balls, two strikes. Brody deals. Knocked down by Davis behind the plate. Pitch was in the dirt. Brody with a couple of strikeouts. Looking for number three now. Marilla batting 289, senior for the Golden Gophers. The one two, fouled off over to the left. We'll do it again. That's pretty good. That's a 96 mile an hour fastball right at the top of the zone. He was able to, maybe even a little above the zone, he was able to get bat head up enough to stay alive. It's a pitch a lot of guys are going to strike out on. One two, just outside. Good spot from Brecht. Couldn't get Marilla to go after it. The pitch prior, that's just fight it off and live to see another day, right? For sure, but it, it's a tough pitch to fight off. You know, the ball up there, you know, we've talked about how hard it is to get up to an 87-mile-an-hour fastball. 2-2, Two -two sun on the ground to the right side. And foul, athletic trainer Jake Feldman comes out of the dugout, makes a nice play, down to up. He's, he Good infielder. He's been around enough to know what to do. <laughs> As an infielder, you don't want to go up to down. You want to go down to up. Bring it in. Good job, Jake. All right, here's a 2-2 from Brecht. Popped up left side. Tello over towards the line at third. He's in foul territory now. Raiders got it with these. Two down. It was a good at bat from Merrill. just Brody hit. Right, Brody here. won Number that 16, one. Is, you know, Josh once he got ahead, he was able to just keep picking on the edges of the zones. And you know, that was a great pitch. Slider right at the bottom of the zone that he had to go had to go try to fight off, but was able to that foul ball stayed in play. Josh Fitzgerald is in the box, right-handed hitter. Strike one from Brody. One of a couple Iowa kids on the roster. Mason City. Yeah, I mean that's barely Iowa, but it is. Yeah, it's right on the right on the line there. Probably a coin flip. He uh, started his college career at Dallas Baptist. 0-1 pitch, outside. Two down in the inning, bases empty for the Golden Gophers in the second. 2-0 Iowa. Had a pretty good year in limited time, you know, hitting 306, but six extra base hits in his 11 hits. Brody's got the sign. Here's the 1-1. Outside again, ball two. Yeah, Brody's actually had better luck with the left-handers than he's had with the right-handers. Isn't that something? 
had to really, uh, really kind of battle to find the zone with the, with the right-handers, especially with his fastball. Really trying to hammer the outside part of the plate against the right-handers. Cop setting up inside now, and a swing and a miss, two and two. And he set up inside, but <laughs> Brody still went outside with it. Yeah, that was a 97-mile-an-hour fastball on the on the outside part of the, the black of the plate. So maybe he's got just a little bit of pull going on. He's got to adjust the aim a little bit. 2-2 two -two from Brody. Off the end of the bat, in the air, down the line and right. That will be foul. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. All right, so you've really been throwing the fastball, Brody. It's time for the off speed, you think, John? Splitter's coming. That's been on for him today. Yeah, it's, it's just try to keep it down in the zone a little bit. We'll see if you're right. Here comes the 2-2. Fouled off. Good at bat by Fitzgerald. If he comes back to that pitch again and doubles up on it. 2-2 two -two is low and in. Around the shins. And the count's now full. That's the first time we've really seen Brody go inside to the right-handed hitter. And now, with a full count coming, Brody gets back on the rubber and he's ready. Here's the pitch. In the air, deep to left. Peterson running over. Sam still running. Sam couldn't quite get to it. It's off the wall. And Fitzgerald will have a double. Oh, he's trying to stretch it to a triple. Here comes the throw. Got him in third. How about that? You Sammy P. You chose poorly. <laughs> What's Fitzgerald doing? He was cruising into second base. Had the play right in front of him. Like, okay, smart guy. He's going to go for the double. And then all of a sudden he decides, no, I'm going to go for third. And Petey throws a strike to Tello and just slapped the tag right on him. Exceptional defensive play. Peterson to Tello to get the third out. We'll go to the bottom of the second right after this. Iowa 2, Minnesota nothing. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Well, offensively, Iowa grabbed momentum right off the right off the rip. Good pitching on the defensive side, and then uh, off the second a defensive play, an exceptional defensive play, Reese. continues the momentum now for Iowa. Full swing for the Hawks. 2-0 in the bottom of the second. We'll see Reese Moore up first. He's the DH. He'll start the second. Left-handed hitter. Lefty on lefty matchup for Reese. He's seen plenty of it this year. He takes ball one, low and out. Yeah, he's... Uh, you know, we, we joked about it when he finally saw the right-handed guy come in uh, on Sunday. It's like, oh, man, I finally, finally get a guy thrown from the other side. And boy, two more, two more lefty starters this weekend to come, uh, to come hassle him. Take strike one to even the count. And another but guy that's going to want to spin it. So he's going to have to kind of make sure he, he stays that discipline and doesn't help out and chase. 1-1 one, one to Moore off the end of the bat. He really got in front of that and pulled it foul over to the right. Uh, I will say to that point, 
the coaches have great trust in him to, to put him in the lineup, even though it's been a bit of a, a rocky matchup for him lately. Well, a rocky matchup, and he's still hitting 347. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's he's taken advantage of the opportunities. He, you know, There's been a day or so here or there where he's looked a little overmatched. 1-2 is hit on the ground to the right side. Tough play for the Gophers. Ooh, backhand stopped by the second baseman. Throws down the line and gets away from the first baseman. We'll have an error awarded on the infield somewhere, I believe, the second baseman. I don't know. That... Boy, that that is a tough error. I mean, he is running toward left field, and he's got to try to throw. Yes, he throws him out, but that's anything but an easy play. I know the error goes up right, a bit, right away, but we'll see if it stays once it's kind of pondered a little bit. Minnesota had a bit of a shift on there, so... I think in a in a typical defensive alignment, that's right to the second baseman and much easier play, but the shift almost hurt him there. It in actually that, did hurt him. Yeah, in that case, it did. You don't punish Reese for that, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if that holds as an error. So Reese is on. I was had plenty of traffic. Two to nothing, leading the bottom of the second. Ben Wilmis is up for Iowa, starting right fielder. Good to see Ben back in the starting lineup. Novotny deals. Ben takes for a strike on the inside corner. The Gophers today wearing all gray uniforms with uh, pinstripes, maroon pinstripes for Minnesota. They've got Minnesota spelled out in their maroon across the chest with gold trim. Maroon caps in the field. 1-1. One, one. Wilma squared to bunt, pulled it back. That's ball two. Big block, gold M on the front panel for Minnesota. Iowa goes with their script whites today. Ben had been in a little bit of a funk and then halfway through the Purdue game came on, halfway through the second game of the Purdue series came on and kind of found his way and had a pretty good game on Sunday as well. So good to see him kind of refining that groove. I mean, it's a long season. You're not, uh, you're, you're very rarely up the whole season. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Two well miss. Here's the pitch. Foul to the right. Do it again at two and two. It, it, to Wilmis's credit, you know, didn't get two down when he was taken out of the starting lineup. He just got back to work like he has in his career. Finds himself back in, and as you said, John, a number of quality at bats against the Boilermakers last weekend. Two two, low and out. Good discipline there. Full count. Well, the nice part for Ben too is is having having kind of had to live through and work through some of those ups and downs. He knows that hey, if I'm not in the lineup, that doesn't mean it's permanent. It's only permanent if I make it permanent. And so he's kept a good approach, kept a good outlook. Full count pitch. Wilmis takes high for ball four. And that's where even though the batting average isn't necessarily where he wants it, you know, he was 419 on base percentage before that walk. So he's still been able to find his way on base uh, and, and create some opportunity there. So see if the Hawkeyes go short game here now with two on and Michael Seeger's coming to the plate. Mitch Bowe, the coach for the Hawks, occupying the third base box we'll have time called as a mound visit for minnesota uh, mitch bow down the line at third will molfler down the line at right associate head coach marty sutherland the hitting coach he's out of the dugout and he'll bring in his runners and batter michael seegers over to the right side and have a bit of a chit chat well and this for minnesota is clearly a kind of like what the infield did for him in the first inning and hey just settle in we need you because there's nobody down in the bullpen it's not there's no question this is his half inning, so he's got to just settle in. You do the best you can here to to kind of get him corralled. He's been around the plate for the most part. I mean, I know he just walked Wilmus there, but you know he's he's thrown good pitches. He's he's nibbled on the edges pretty well, and unfortunately for him, the Hawkeye hitters have just done a, a better job so far through through an inning and a couple batters. This is exactly what you talked about. Uh, Coach Heller talked about it earlier. You gotta put this team away. Right. Gotta put them away. You know, you, you you get an opportunity here, and you know we saw it. We saw it over the weekend where you know what Iowa on Saturday four runs on what, 15 hits or something, and and Purdue had three on six, and on Sunday it was more of the same nine runs on 15 hits or something, and and Purdue had six on four. So you know Iowa just needs to keep finishing. Corners come in for the Gophers. Michael takes right down the middle for strike one. He had shown Bunt, he pulled it back. Boy, he took a fastball right down the middle, too. I mean, just a perfect pitch to Bunt. He turned around and asked the home plate umpire. So 
it, it really wasn't even wasn't even an edge anywhere. Ball outside to Seegers that time, and he did not show the bunt. We've seen Iowa do it a couple times this year. This feels like a prime opportunity to to lay down a bunt, but. You know, Michael is a bit of a ground ball candidate, too. We'll see what the Hawks elect to do with Seegers in this next pitch. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Early square of the bunt now. Novotny comes set. The pitch. Oh, we've got no pitch. And looks like time violation clock. on Minnesota. And they catcher popped out late and called, you know, flashed some signs. And, and then when Michael squared early, I think it just kind of set off. We're going to have a quick question here from three different people in the dugout including head coach of the golden gophers john anderson in his 43rd year i imagine the home plate umpire will be all ears for a little while here <laughs> he, and, and and coach anderson's not fired up or anything but i think when he comes out of the dugout you listen i don't matter doesn't matter who you are well the funny thing is his two assistants were just kind of they were more animated and Coach Anderson just kind of kept slow walking around him <laughs> and Hands walked in the up. pockets. <laughs> got the got the answer he wanted. He may not have liked it, but he hands in his pockets, walk back. And Coach cool. Anderson retiring after the season. He's got 11 Big Ten titles, 19 NCAA tournament appearances. Played for Minnesota in 1974. Instantly became an assistant after that, and then <laughs> head coach in 1981. Ball down and into Seegers for ball three. Yeah, Hawks are playing tricks. Well, Seager shows bunt early, and then depending on what the defense does, that then dictates whether he comes back to slash or whether he continues with the bunt or what the plan is. 3-1, drops in the low outside corner. Good pitch from Novotny, and the count will be full now. So the bet has been made for Iowa. Don't really have a, a bunt opportunity anymore, so swing away, Michael, if it's there. Yeah, you would think that uh, you would think bunt is certainly off now. Here's the pitch, high and out, ball four. Bases loaded for the Hawks in the second. Three free bases for Iowa. We're flipping the, the freebie war early. Yeah, I'm still going with the first one as a hit. <laughs> sure, yes, yeah, right, right. So, so I'm gonna call I'm gonna call two of those free, free bases, but, uh, but both of those two were good at bats. You know, both were down in the count and, and kind of kept, kept finding a way to work their way through it there. Michael, Michael ended up kind of getting back ahead, but Here's Gable Mitchell with the bases loaded. Takes up and in, up on the forearms. Almost got hit by the pitch. Only because he's crowding the plate. That ball's almost, that ball is, is right on the upper part of the zone, but because he's sitting right on top of the plate right now. Nobody out for Mitchell. One ball, no strikes. He bats from the right side. Takes again, upstairs, ball two. There is action now in the Minnesota bullpen, so it, it may not be Novotny's half an inning if this doesn't get better quick talked about it before that's what's so crucial about the friday game obviously you've got great talent out there but preserve your bullpen as long as you can 2-0 mitchell takes for a strike inside corner two and one i don't know if you can see gable's toes but boy from my angle it looks like he's now it looks like he's off a little bit maybe that was the uh must have had a take sign so he was getting a little bit closer to the plate 2-1 outside ball three Novotny hasn't been wild or, or missing by a lot. They've been around, but certainly out of the zone. Yeah, he hasn't sprayed a ton and, and give the Hawkeye hitters a lot of credit. They haven't chased outside of the zone so far for the most part. Here's a 3-1. Swing and a miss. High fastball, but probably in the zone, and it's a full count now. Yeah, that one would have been close. Bases loaded, nobody out for Gable Mitchell in the bottom of the second. 2-0 Iowa. Novotny comes set. The pitch to Gable. Outside, ball four. Three straight walks, and a run will come home. This is Moore. 3-0 Iowa. And I guarantee you, the Minnesota dugout does not want to see the guy stroll into the plate right now. Back to the top, here's Andy. Andy Nelson hitting the seams off the baseball the last couple of weeks at a sharp line drive to start the bottom of the first today now he'll come up with the bases loaded and nobody out three nothing iowa you gotta turn this into a crooked number though a single one isn't it first pitch to nelson 
in the dirt, sliding stop by Hunt behind the plate. Ball one. Musical songwriter Sam Hunt. Sam Hunt, country. You into Sam Hunt? I'm okay with Sam Hunt. Sam Hunt's pretty good. Yeah. The songs he writes, too, not just the stuff he performs, but the, the other stuff you see him write is pretty darn good. 1-0 pitch. Nelson hits on the ground, foul over to the left. Uh, we've got to the point, John, where movies, we're, we're opposite ends of the spectrum. You're, you're into some movies. I'm not into virtually any. But music, it sounds like we, we're on the same page. We could do that there. <laughs> well, cause I, I just... I dropped a I dropped a subtle movie reference on you just a little bit ago, and you completely missed it again. So, so yes, I, I've I've pretty much given up on you hitting any of those. <laughs> I'll go back and listen to the tape, John. See if I can catch it a second time. Two and one for Nelson. A hawk on every base. Novotny's ready. Here's the pitch. Ah, in there for a strike. Two and two. Again, that's another really good pitch. Fastball right down low inside corner. And that's got to be the thing that's a little frustrating for Nevada right now. Boy, there's some times where he just dots it up. Count even at two, the pitch. Nelson swings and misses over the top. He's out number one. And that's about the first time a Hawkeye hitters went outside of the zone, really outside of the zone. Puck maybe did on one of the pitches in his at bat, but uh, Iowa's done a good job keeping him in. That time he throws the throws the change up there and drops it out of the zone, and Andy goes fishing. That brings up Sam Peterson. Bases loaded, one out for Iowa in the second. First pitch to Petey. Swing and a miss. You see Hokinson's making a little change here in center field as he's shifted after PD aligned that ball into left center field first at bat. Over there towards uh, left. Just a touch. A one. Outside corner, call it a strike. Nothing in two. Man, those are two outstanding pitches from Novotny. That ball's maybe just a half ball outside, but, but probably exactly where he wanted to throw it. The first pitch was a little below the zone, but Really good there, too. 0-2. Oh, Swing and a miss. Two down. I gotta tell you, I don't know I don't know that it's a successful strategy to load the bases and come up Third and try to face this Raiders part of the lineup. But great job so far with a couple of strikeouts for Novotny. He's dialed in right now. Yeah, that's 88. That's in the center of the plate, too. And it just got the swing and miss on Petey. Just a little movement on it that he fooled Sam just a touch. All right, it's up to Raider Tello now. Bases loaded and two outs for him. Novotny deals. Line drive, left center field, base hit, and it'll get all the way to the wall. Here's one, here's two. The Hawks are sending the third. Here's Gable Mitchell, he'll score. Raider Tello with the salsa to second. Three runs come across, bases clearing, double. Boy, what a uh, what a momentum shifter that was. If Navani figured out how to get out of that, only giving up one, what a huge win for Minnesota in the dugout. Instead, Tello turns one around 103 into the left center field gap, and that will do it for Navani. Six nothing Iowa. Call to the bullpen for the Golden Gophers in the bottom of the second. We'll take a pitching change break. We're back right after this. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details.
Hawkeyes have played it four runs in the bottom of the second, leading Minnesota 6-0, and the Golden Gophers have to make a pitching change. They'll go to the six-foot-four left-handed senior, Justin Thorstenson. 1-0 in seven appearances this year with a 3.63 ERA, 17 and a third innings, 11 hits, eight runs, just seven of those were earned. Has walked 13, but struck out 21. Opponents getting him at just a 186 batting average. But boy, what a huge win for Iowa here to get into the bullpen now and start mm -hmm. kind of tipping this tipping this over and, and, and trying to pay those dividends on Saturday and Sunday as well. Yes, uh, you, you have a great read on, on breaking the chain. You like to say breaking the chain. Within this game, that certainly happened, but for the whole weekend, now we're in territory doing that too. Right, it's, it's one thing when this happens on Sunday and you you know, you got a couple days to, to recover everybody. Obviously, you know, guys that get used now, depending on how they're used, you know, probably aren't pitching tomorrow. You know, maybe they can't pitch on Sunday, depending on what they're used to. Uh, so, you know, you start, you look, you know, some of the teams that Iowa's faced have, have thrown 18, 20 pitchers. You look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only 10 pitchers in the relief core here for Minnesota. So, you know, there aren't a lot of guys. And, and you know, you think about what Thorstenson's done, seven, seven appearances, 17 and a third. So two, three innings. Doesn't get you to the fifth inning yet. Uh, yeah, only in the second. Six nothing Iowa. After the bases clearing double by Raider Tello, he stands at second base with two outs. Davis Cop takes ball outside. And Thorsten's is kind of the same way. Fastball is going to be just in the low 90s. It's uh, going to throw that slider, the changeup. But you know, he, he's kind of he's going to miss in the in the white part of the plate, and he's going to miss wide. Cop off the end of the bat, shoots it into right center. It is down for a base hit. Tello around third, he'll score. Davis Cop brings home another run, 7 0 Iowa. Boy, for as many balls as Iowa's hit hard, they get away with one there. As Davis Cop just puts it in the Bermuda Triangle between center, right, and second. Center fielder, Kyle Huckstor. So far, the, the clutch hitting element for Iowa today has been very strong with uh, a couple of two strike hits in the first, and now all this pretty much with, with two outs. Loaded the bases, but then got the big hit. Uh, with two outs. Well, it's four RBIs now here in this inning with two outs, yep. so. Kyle Huxdorf in the box. First pitch to Huck. He takes low and in. Good stop behind the plate by Hunt. And that's a better job from Huck, too. That's a, a pitch in his first at-bat that he maybe swung over the top of, so good adjustment there to recognize what they're trying to do, even though it's a different pitcher. Again, downstairs, ball two. Are you surprised it went to another lefty, John? Because we don't know that much about him yet, but... Yeah, I, I, not really. I mean, it, if you look at the scouting report, you think maybe Iowa struggles a little bit with left-handers, although you know, had decent enough success the past couple weekends. Huck sends a chopper foul to third. But, you know, maybe you, you, you stick to that game plan. They do have, a, all of a sudden, they have a righty still throwing down there, too. So maybe Thorstenson's kind of a... a a short-term solution so they could bring him back later in the weekend mm -hmm. um, especially you know if you start to feel like this game starts to get out of hand already yeah seven nothing iowa in the second cop at first base here's the two one to huckstorf lined into center another base hit for the hawks they're sixth of the game keep things going in the second iowa is now batted around we'll see reese moore again yeah that was 88 going in, 99 coming out, right back over Thorstenson's head. Designated hitter, Reese Moore. This is another one of those for Reese. You know, Thorstenson spins it a lot, so stick with it, see it out of the hand the best you can. And then punish one. Yes. Reese batting 342. Reached on an error. To start the inning, ball's in the dirt. Uh, runners will stay put for now at first and second for Iowa. And Huck has to be careful at first base. His his, uh, his read and his aggressive nature have to fall in line to what Davis Cop's read and aggressive nature is <laughs> at second base. 1-0 delivery to Moore. Inside, did it hit him? It did, in the elbow. He's got the elbow protector on, so it didn't hurt him too bad. Easy for you to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing. I'm hoping for Reese. He, he didn't hold it, so I'm going to guess you're right. 
And again, the bases are loaded. For Iowa in the second, really trying to drive the dagger deeper on the Golden Gophers. Two outs for Ben Wilmus. Walked and scored in his first plate appearance. 7-0 Iowa in the second. The pitch to Ben. Popped up right side. Right fielder giving chase. The second baseman counsels out there as well, and he makes the backpedaling Five grab for the third out. Three Five hits. runs come Warriors. across for Iowa. Warriors. Rousing Warriors. ovation Two from those Warriors. wearing black Seven. and gold Warriors. at Banks this afternoon. 7 nothing Iowa. We're back for the third right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games, plus interviews, analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. We've been on there before. Yes. See how many times we'll... Uh make our way over there this year all right it's been a while since we've seen brody <laughs> that was a long second inning for the hawks seven nothing as we get to the third it's seven eight nine for the golden gophers they do have a hit but fitzgerald ended the top of the second by getting thrown out at third base well yeah how's that for a momentum switch you know, Iowa gets that, gets the big out rather than having a guy at second, the inning's still going on. Iowa throws the guy out at third and then comes and, and hangs a handful in the bottom of the inning. Had an idea that that's how that might have happened. Maybe not to the extent that Iowa put it on Minnesota, but certainly worked out that way. Chris Hokinson is in the box for the Golden Gophers, left-handed sophomore. He's their starting center fielder. 1-1 one, one pitch from Brecht is inside too far and it hit him if you're gonna get hit by a brody brick pitch that's the way to do it get hit on a bounce maybe got him in the shin or the the calf i guess on the uh, on the bounce yeah it, it was uh yeah, like 10, i said it's Sam probably Hunt. it's probably the best way to go down if you're gonna do it on a on a brody pitch get one of his uh get a slider in the dirt or the the splitter in the yeah. dirt a lot of left-handers in this lineup for Minnesota. This is Sam Hunt. He's actually a switch hitter, and he takes way inside. And Brody will back him off the plate a bit. Well, that's where Brody's fastball's been missing. You know, again, he, and now when you when you put a left-hander in the box there, that's uh, your room to miss there is pretty small. Right. Breck taking his time now. The 1-0, swing and a miss, 1-1. One and one. Hunt is the catcher for the Golden Gophers, batting 194. Yeah, these Started are, making his 10th start today. I was say, these are two guys you want to see Brody attack a little bit more here. So whatever whatever he feels like his best pitch is, go ahead and go ahead and throw it in the zone and mm -hmm. go get him. Mm -hmm. Count even at one. Short lead at first base for Hokinson. 1-1 one, one is just outside, ball two. Hunt does have, uh, of his six hits, four of them are for extra bases, so. He we'll hit, pop there. He, he must hit the barrel when he makes contact. 13 strikeouts in 31 at bats. So there's a whiff, there's a whiff factor there. Like we just saw right there, a nice pitch from Brecht. Took quite a bit off it. 
Two balls, two strikes, nobody out in the top of the third. Runner at first base for the Golden Gophers. Brecht looks in for the sign. He's got it. Pause in the pitch. Inside and low again. Ball three. Did you hear what's going to happen with the flags? We have we have an update on the flags, Hawkeye Nation. We do have an update. Allegedly, possibly. I'll believe it when I see it. I Although Derek, facilities Derek, great does a great job. So I, I, I do think it'll happen. We'll we'll get to it in a moment. 3-2 pitch from Brecht on its way home. Called third strike. Got him on the inside uh, corner for the first Peter. out. Well, I don't know what Hunt's asking there. That ball's Shows that ball's not even on the black it. part of the plate. It. That one's on all white part of the plate. And it's above the knees, so good spot there from Brody. I got another hitter, Larson at 214. You want to go get him. 15 strikeouts and 56 at bats. No bat from the right side. A little bit more of an interest in keeping Hokinson close to the bag with a couple of pickoff moves. Three in a row now. What do you think has changed? You're going to keep keep him close. Well, maybe you feel like, okay, we're going to need to manufacture a run here, but Hokinson's just two for three on the stolen base side. Bottom of the order. First pitch from Brecht is up and in, and Larson had squared to bunt and got a really good look at that fastball. <laughs> he saw seams or perhaps couldn't see anything, just heard it whistle by. Got out of the way. One ball, no strikes. Breck trying to lock back in. Here's the 1-0 pitch. There it is, low outside corner, one and one. Yeah, sounds like we'll have some manipulation of the flags finally, John. It, yeah, they'll be they'll be they'll be rhymed to reason for why they're hanging in a certain spot, and and they'll be moving based on based on the standings. One-one is fouled off in the box. One and two. I believe that uh, begins next week because they're they're very different this week. I can tell you that they're, they're different, but they're <laughs> so Michigan they're, State's not in the left field corner. They're, they're still randomly different. But I did I did hear how they get put up now. Ooh, okay, that'll be news to me. Okay, one ball, two strikes. Brecht has got the sign that he likes. With one out, he deals to Larson, fouled back. You're not really gonna like why they're put where they are. Oh. They're they're just so left or i'm sorry right of the iowa flag so to, or right yeah right of the state of iowa flag is the iowa flag right left of the batter's eye is the big 10 flag and then the team the visiting team that's here okay i can get behind that the rest are random Oof. One, one two's in the dirt based on um you know doesn't want all the red flags hanging in one spot so they're they're then just kind of oh so there is a little bit where yeah, we yeah, just don't just, want to put the red all together well or, or any yeah they're, then they're just randomly dispersed to whichever one of, you pull out of the box yeah they're just, they're just spread around <laughs> a little bit that, that certainly sounded like how it worked out two balls two strikes way outside from breck now full count sounds like they'll be uh based on the standings which hopefully that, I don't know if the Iowa one will move because I, I know that Coach Heller likes it out there by the state of Iowa flag. Yeah, it, if, if it does, we hope to see it right down the left field line as often as possible. Yes. Breck looking for a strikeout and a bit of trouble with Larson. Full count pitch, way outside again. Couldn't tell you what that pitch was, John. Was it the splitter way out? It was all Losing. of a sudden. You know, he, he's just had a difficult time. Difficult time finding, uh, you know, kind of every, everything's gone out Second there right now. Brady we'll have to have to find a find a way, kind of like Novotny did when he faced the top two of the Iowa order. Yeah. See if Brody can can buckle back in here. One out, runners at first and second in the third. Only in the third. We've been playing for about an hour. Top of the order, Brady Council. First pitch, strike one. Hard fastball outside part of the plate. Council hit it deep to left his first time up. Peterson was able to grab it right in front of the wall. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss, went off speed. Better pitch from Brody, nothing in two. Just a touch. Yeah, still a little bit of wind, but the wind has died down. 
some. I mean, it'll, it'll help carry, but boy, it was it was giving balls 15, 20 feet of carry early. Well, early in the game. We're still early in the game. <laughs> Very lengthy game so far. A swing and a miss. Brecht with his second strikeout of the inning. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Big strikeout for Brecht right there. His second of the inning. He's up to four on the afternoon. Two outs. Runners at first and second for Jake Perry, left-handed hitter. Brody fires. Lined in a right center. This will be trouble. It's down into the wall. One run is in. Here comes another for the Gophers. Perry's around second. He'll slam on the brakes right there with a two RBI double with two outs. It's seven to two. That took the took the get me over there and just drove it uh when I mean, you saw that from purdue a little bit you know where they, they weren't taking pitches early in that bat if they got one that was just kind of spinning over and that ball was First hammered base, 105 off the bat just right out of right center field i was just kind of watching ben wilmus was a little shallow uh, and then the ball gets roped and of course on a line like that it's going to scoot through so the gophers answer don't allow the Hawks to get a shutdown inning. Brecht missed outside to Niels. And you look at how Minnesota scored as the free bases, John. And that's the you know, hit by pitch and a walk, and then you get one good hit. 2-0 to Niels. But that's what when you when you put, especially when you put the bottom of the order on and, and let uh, you know, Hokinson's got a 311 batting average, but Larson's hitting 214 with a lot of strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Hitters count for Niels. Takes low, ball three. About an inning a game that's kind of shaky for Brody. This appears to be that inning for Brecht. Well, the really interesting part of this is we're going to get through the third inning, and Brody's going to have thrown more pitches than the Minnesota staff has. Strike one on the outside corner. That's a fascinating stat to me. I mean, it's that's seven to two currently, and Brecht is it? Fifth. This will be pitch number fifty-eight. And Minnesota sitting at fifty-nine. Mm -hmm. Ball four. Missed everything in that bat. At bat low and out to the right-handed hitter. And that's the way. That's the way it's been since the first inning. You know every. Every pitch has gone out that way. We'll see if it's usually about the time that Coach McGrath comes out and says Mazinga. says hi, and he's going to do that right now. Well, what's the adjustment here, John? Uh, what do you think this conversation's like? Uh, two out base hit for Minnesota after after Brecht got counseled down on strikes and, and struck him out. A dangerous hitter uh, it was Perry that brought home couple of runs well at this point I'd kind of expect coach McGrath to ask Brody hey what do you feel good about you know what do you what do you trust right now and, and, and let's uh, let's make a let's make a game from, let's forget the scouting report of what it says he hits what do you trust to you know not a get me over what do, what do you feel like you're gonna really be able to go execute your plan and your pitch on and I think that's what you'll see you, coming right out of this you're gonna see Whatever Brody feels like his best pitch is today, you're going to see that right now. Last year, primarily a, a fastball slider guy, right? And yeah. now this year, there's a, a lot more that Brody's been working on. Yeah, we haven't seen nearly as many sliders in no. the last yeah. last couple outings. All right. This is Mazenga with runners at first and second. 7-2, to Iowa with the lead. There's a fastball for a strike. Outside corner to the left-handed DH. So whatever it was, he felt he, he's thrown better fastballs to left-handers. He when he tries to hit the left-handed batter's box side of home plate, though, he's really struggled on that area. Mm -hmm. A one delivery, similar spot, just a little further outside. Ball one. Just looking at the profile with that one. Maybe that one was the splitter. A little bit of downward movement on it. A little top spin to it. 
1-1 is ripped into right center. Wilmus turning and running into the gap. Huxdorf giving chase as well, and it's down for a base hit. Huxdorf cuts it off. Two runs coming across to score for the Gophers, and it is 7-4. All with two outs. Two outs and another free base wrapped in between there, and that's the... You know, boy, you had a, you had a chance to, to end this thing. And now the Minnesota dugout, the Minnesota fans, they care again. Seven to four. A couple of doubles Go off of Breck, Boston, but three free bases Maryland. have hurt the Hawks. And that was a pretty good pitch. That was 95 miles an hour. It was inside. Kind of jammed him up. He only came off the bat at 94. Swing and a miss. This is Marilla. Yeah, he, he just, I, I suppose he guessed right. Or, or predicted that that was the pitch that Brody was throwing because he, he looked smooth and ready to roll. Yeah, and, and I mean, again, it, it's more of ooh, it misses inside. You can more an issue of, of you know, the, the other at bat, the, the walks around it that are, you know, again, if you give up two doubles, well, who cares? It's a run, but mm -hmm. you walk three guys and they all score and, and it's four now. And instead of seven to one, you're... You're in a little bit more trouble, and as he goes back to nibbling around here, he's missed twice again, and he's down 2-1. Yeah. Went from a, a possible shutdown inning to four runs coming across for Minnesota. They're right back in at 7-4. Iowa with the lead in the third. 2-1 pitch from Bracht. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Look out as let go of the bat over to the Iowa dugout. That boy John has to dive out of the way. <laughs> He, kind of gifted. he hit the deck. He did. That was, uh, well, and, and to be honest, that's why, you, that's why you watch the game when you're when you're in some of those seats. And that bad helicopter is right over his head or right to where he was sitting. Two balls, two strikes, ready for play now. Brecht comes set, the pitch. Line drive up the middle, base hit. Huxdorf picks it up. They're sending the runner from third. Here comes the throw, and it is late. Seven to five. See a five spot, match a five spot. I didn't see this coming, John. <laughs> Fair, I really didn't either. Now Minnesota's starting to hit Brody, too. Fielder, yeah, that's great contact. It wasn't Brody's best pitch. That thing was right down the middle with uh, two strikes. Well, and that's... Again, that kind of goes to the, the trust factor and, and what do you think you can throw for strikes? Just too much middle of the plate. This is lifted deep to left and is deep trouble. And it is gone off the scoreboard. We're tied at seven. Are you kidding me? Minnesota scores a quick touchdown in the top of the third. And that ball goes 4.07. What in the world is going on? That was Josh Fitzgerald. And there is chatter going on in the Minnesota dugout all of a sudden as home plate umpire tried to get him back. Davis Cobb and Fitzgerald exchanged phone numbers. Jack Whitlock is in the Iowa bullpen, but uh, he's just lightly tossing right now. Yeah, he just got there. Whoa. Five hits for the Gophers, seven earned runs. Seven to seven. Called back to the screen. This is Hokinson. They've batted around now. And funny Man. enough, that was actually a pretty good pitch. 95 mile an hour, it was probably at bottom of the, uh, you know, just at the bottom of his knees. I mean, it was middle of the plate, but got ambushed and demolished. Downstairs, count even at one. You've got the Minnesota fans sitting down the third baseline behind their dugout. And they are more than back into this now. Fans are making some noise. Here's the windup, the 1-1 one -one from Brecht. Hit down the line and left. This is trouble, but it will be foul, thankfully. One and two. Yep. Iowa did such a great job to get into Minnesota's bullpen and, and put them 
significantly on the back foot with a seven to nothing lead. And now the Gophers have grabbed it and tied it up. Returned the favor. One, two, outside. Just off the plate, two and two. Close, good pitch. Hawkeye crowd's mad, but it missed wide. Probably a, a ball. It's two balls outside of the strike zone, so it's a ball out of where they might get it called. That one even further, and the count is full. Shocking development now. Mm, we got a new game. I do not want to see another hitter this inning if you're Brody. I mean, hello, Captain Obvious, but. 3-2, yeah. out of the windup. Here's a pitch. Called third strike inside corner. That's Seven runs come here. across for Seven Minnesota, for and we are tied going to the bottom Tied of the third. All right, Hawkeye bats got to keep bringing it. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Oak Knoll is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknoll.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bose, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your safety health care needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, it's one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Congratulations. We have All right. Michael Seegers, Gable Mitchell, and Andy Nelson coming to the plate in a now tied ball game. Didn't think we'd be saying that after the Hawks got out to a seven to nothing lead, headed into the third, but a touchdown and an extra point for the Gophers out of nowhere. And now all that hard work that Iowa did offensively, they're gonna have to do it again, maybe a couple more times. No, we were talking about whether Minnesota might wanna, might wanna kinda start going to the bottom of their bullpen and, and wiping away the game. And, and all of a sudden they, uh, they approached like crazy. Now their bullpen sitting back down, and, and they'll uh, they'll depend on Thorstenson here and see if he can go a while for them. Strong bullpen, according to Coach Heller. Thorstenson, a big, stocky, tall left-hander. He'll go from the windup. Deals first pitch strike to Michael Seegers. You know, you just have to imagine the Hawks are are shocked right now. They're maybe on their back foot a bit, so. It's all about staying calm and probably getting back to the basics a bit. Yeah, I mean. 0-1 oh, is bunted foul by Seegers, nothing in two. You know, it, it's still it's still all the things you did. You've been at bat twice and you've scored runs both times. It's still the same, it's the same approach. You just, you know, you don't have the seven to nothing lead anymore, which you know, you, there's been around, you know, the three years Brody's been on the, on the staff, there's this, air of invincibility the teams aren't going to hit him a little bit oh two is low and out Seegers watches it go by and unfortunately he's been uh in the last two starts he's been you know off the plate and then when he comes onto the plate teams have been jumping on him a little bit one two Seegers shoots it down the line and right that'll be foul i still just wonder if there's something that He's not showing uh, where where teams are teams are seeing something where they kind of have an idea, but you know for two innings it didn't look like they had any idea what yeah. was coming, and then one inning they did. So uh, you know maybe maybe that's far fetched too. But one two, Michael pops it up to the right, and again out of play. Bottom of the third, seven to seven. 
neither team with as many hits as they have run scored. <laughs> that hasn't been one of the sharper Friday games. No, both teams done a nice job with uh, they've done a nice job with free bases and taking advantage of them. One two, ground ball to third. It's gloved and thrown across the diamond by Perry for out number one. That was kind of off, Second baseman, off the end Mitchell. of the bat for Michael on a on a low breaking ball. Let's see if number nine Gable Mitchell can get uh, can get the Hawks going. Mitchell will go from the right side. Squares to bunt and pulled it back wisely. Ball one. It's kind of a, you know, it's a good approach. You saw Seegers do it and Mitchell showing it. Just whatever it takes to get on base right now. Yep. 2-0, and Mitchell watches it stay high. This is like, okay, if you just look at the third inning, they scored a ton of runs. Hawks have to answer if you just go inning by inning. Right. Just don't look about what you don't look back at what you gave up. The the, the lead or let it get away for a bit. Good discipline by Mitchell. Takes outside ball three. Well, you probably you probably underestimated Minnesota if you thought they weren't going to try to punch back a little bit. Now, granted, they may have hit you with a bigger swing than you expected or wanted, but. There's a strike below the letters to Mitchell, three and one. Question, right. question is now, what what do you do to punch back? Yeah. You know, how how do you respond? That's why if if you just could have hold him, held him in the third, Mitchell takes another strike inside corner, three and two. If you just could have held him in the third after you put up the big spot. Hey, wait, right? wait, you're just saying though, the team can't think about that. Yeah. You didn't hold him, so now yeah. you, you are where you are now, and just strengthening your point that you made. 3-2 is outside for ball four. And Mitchell will walk. Yeah, now you've just got it. This is a good start. Now you want Andy Nelson to come back and have a good at bat. First baseman, Andy Nelson. And just, you know, just like again, just like the top of the or bottom of the first inning. Now you're just gonna put your put your foundation back yes. together and, and keep going. Building. We'll see Nelson. He's one for two today. How do you feel about Iowa's run game this season, John? It, I think they're a little bit below where they thought they'd be to this point. Nelson takes inside, start as at bat. And I'd probably go to that seeing a ton of left-handed pitching too. I mean, certainly going to slow down the run game a little bit. Uh, and you've got some, you, you have a couple of experienced guys, but you've got a lot of inexperienced guys in key roles getting on base. 1-0 pitch, Nelson takes. Ball two. You know, and Huck's been, you know, Huck's been hitting for some more extra base power, so, you know, hasn't always been on first base. Petey the same way, although he's got a ton of stolen bases. 2-0 to Andy. Inside and low. Ball three. Thorsonson's sort of lost it a bit here, maybe because he had to sit <laughs> in his dugout for a while. Yeah, that's uh, certainly a possibility again. Red light for Andy, you'd imagine. Here comes a 3-0. Outside, ball four. All right, come on, Hawks. Answer back right here. Couple of walks. Left fielder, Sam Peterson. Sam Peterson. Yeah, I mean this is a this is a big spot now here to kind of replace your stamp on it. Petey can do it with one swing of the bat. Try and move to second base. Mitchell dives back. Better time move than the last one they threw to second. Yeah, much better execution. It didn't go into center field. Well, that's, that time he actually put it on <laughs> Council's number, cutting yeah. in instead of up and away. Mitchell and Nelson, a lot of speed on base. First pitch to Petey. Mm, foul over to the right. <laughs> Sam has been taking some healthy hacks today, but just has not quite timed it up. There's probably some pent-up frustration building for Petey. 
I'd still like to track back to the last five games, six games, and see how many times he swung at the first pitch. Do a case study, John. A one, ground ball to third, thrown to second, start the double play, got it. Five, four, three. No runs, no hits, no Couple runners run. get on for three, Iowa, three, but three, uh, left on base. And we'll go to the fourth, tied at seven. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood we're savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. When corn grows fuel, Iowa win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Is GB turned up to 11 today, or is it just me? Yeah, I think maybe something to do with the, the large crowd, but PA system pretty loud today. <laughs> maybe a little bit too loud. I don't know. All right, new pitcher into the game for the Hawks in the fourth. Jack Whitlock coming into the game, the right-handed junior from Cumming, Georgia. Two and two on the season in nine appearances, 13 innings, 17 hits, 16 runs have all been earned, seven walks, 14 strikeouts, giving up eight extra base hits, including three home runs. But he's been better in the last, we'll call it two weekends, two weekends plus the midweek at Georgia and on his way a little bit after after some early season struggles. It's always nice to see Jack. I'd just rather not see him in the fourth, though. Correct. And you know, you know, usually, though, when, when Jack gets the call, the first trip is usually uh, a couple on or bases loaded and, and one or none out, really trying to put out a fire. And I guess in, in, in a sense, he's still trying to put out a fire here is Minnesota sprinted into their dugout after that double play. There's there's a lot of fire in, in the third base dugout right now. Yeah, there's a lot of potential energy for the Gophers. Brody's day ends very early. Three innings, five hits, seven earned. He walked two, struck out five, hit a batter, gave up three doubles and a home run. And, and that part has been totally new the last couple weeks, giving up the extra base hits and the solid contact. Yeah, bro. Prior to that, most of the, you get a one-off here or there, but even a double would be like a flare off the end of the bat or something. Right. First pitch strike from Whitlock to Sam Hunt. Left-handed hitter to start the top of the fourth. We're tied at seven. Whitlock out of the windup. The right-hander deals. Swing and a miss. So he throws a 75 mile an hour pitch that dots the outside part of the plate. Then he throws a 76 mile an hour pitch that dots the inside part mm. of the plate. Where's he going with this one? The 0-2, fouled back. A mile an hour faster at 77 and probably caught a touch more plate than he meant to, but still a pretty good pitch. Hunt struck out looking in the third was the first out of the inning Whitlock goes fastball low and in the umpire blinked and missed it boy that was that was an outstanding pitch basically almost the pitch that punched him out in his last at bat he mm. saw 95 maybe up and in, up and to the plate a little bit more and now Whitlock drops it out ball two you don't see that sharp fastball from Jack too often, and that one should have been rewarded. 
but have to refocus. We'll go again with the two ball, two strike delivery. Here's the pitch from Jack. Ground ball right side, it'll beat the shift. Mitchell was playing way over towards first base. And that one was a tailor-made ground ball to him if he's playing Coach straight up. Boy, that was an interesting shift too, just to have just to have Mitchell that shifted that far over without Siegs over there. So, you know, still trying to play straight up and, and then rolls it through. And Jack tried to sneak that fastball again, but that one was that one was center of the plate and again it 80 90 percent of the time it's an out but unfortunately i was shifted out of the out that time all right could use another ground ball this is jake larson pitch missed inside from whitlock larson appeared to consider bunting but did not yeah it would make a ton of sense to for your nine hitter to put a ball down here and let the top of the order eat he squares early now, draws Tello in at third. Whitlock misfired outside. Just a bit of an uneasy feeling in the fourth. Can't imagine why that would carry Man. over. Baseball, tough game. 2-0, oh, pitch from Whitlock. There it is. Dropped in there for a strike. Larson watched it go by. The confidence to go back to that pitch 2-0 that's gonna move that much and know you're gonna you're gonna snap it in for a strike. Tip of the cap to Whitlock. Didn't get enough snap on the floater that time. It stayed inside ball three. Nobody out, runner at first. Whitlock looking to throw strikes. He's got Larson, a 3-1 count. Jack comes set. Here's the pitch. In the dirt, ball four. This was Friday against Minnesota last year. Yep. Out of nowhere, the wheels have totally fallen off. Same with a season ago. Baseman, Brady when you had the advantage last year, had a big advantage this year. Yeah, Iowa led three to nothing last year. Gave up a Brody and and company gave up seven runs in the in the fifth inning last year. This year was the third inning that that uh, Minnesota gets seven. I guess fortunately Iowa had seven already. So. But now you world of hurt here. Top of the order, this is Council. Runners at first and second, nobody out. He swings at the first pitch and hits it foul over our heads to the right. Jack doesn't tend to walk a lot of guys, but boy, a seeing eye single to eight hitter and a, and a five pitch walk to the nine hitter. Hmm. Council's 0 for 2 today. Whitlock just missed outside. Count even at 1. Shift on for the Hawks in the infield. Mitchell to the left of second. Seeger's playing closer to Tello over there at third. Protecting against the pull on the infield. The 1 1 delivery. Ball 2 outside. Ball's outside, crowd's mad, but it misses. Yeah. Try pickoff move the second, threw it into center field, but thankfully the runner had to dive back, and he stays put. Hawks look really lethargic right now, just just flat all of a sudden. Well, and you hit it sloppy. On the, you hit it on the head. Your your Friday ace gets pounded, especially a guy like Brody, and and you know. It's it's a dazed it's a dazed punch and but now you have to you have to shake it off here at some point there's still there's still six innings of this game to <laughs> yeah. play. Two balls and a strike. Whitlock he's ready now. Nobody out. Here's the pitch. Missed out again. He's thrown that pitch three times in a row and it has not been called a strike because it's outside. Yeah, council hasn't offered at it and and home plate umpire isn't isn't biting because the pitch is the pitch is wide. You saw. Brody go out there time and time again as well. Three balls and a strike. Whitlock delivers. Lined into left, it is foul. Runners were already around second and nearing third. 
Full count now. Big pitch coming. Because Larson at first has a huge lead. Uh, with Nelson being the only guy on that side of the infield and playing a third of the way to second base, that allows, that allows Larson to get a long ways off there. Full count from Whitlock to Council. Here it is. Popped foul over to the right. Heck of a battle between these two. Yeah, and Council's not a guy that's going to strike out a lot. So you got to figure out if you're Jack, what's your, either what's your swing and miss pitch or what's the pitch he's going to pound into the ground. No, Council's a good hitter. Nothing too good, Jack, but find the zone. The 3-2, low and out. Bases are loaded with nobody out. Jack is one of the Iowa relievers that can get you out of this jam, and right now he's baseman, put Perry. the Hawks in it, and now needs to flip the switch. Tied at seven in the fourth. Bases loaded, nobody out for Jake Perry, who doubled in a couple of runs in the third. We'll have Coach McGrath come out of the dugout and go talk with Jack on the mound. Boy, again, it's... it's three bases that are just killing you right now. In the first two innings, Iowa was way out in front of those. I, I got to imagine it's nearly even now. Well, and I, yeah, Iowa, you've got four walks, four walks for Minnesota, five walks for Iowa, but then you've got you know, Iowa's hit a batter, Minnesota's hit a batter, you've got the, the air on the board for Iowa. So yeah, it's, it's close, but uh, you know, Minnesota's done done more damage you know four extra base hits to just two for Iowa I mean Minnesota just gee, four for six with runners on base three for four with runners in scoring position five for seven with two outs yep that's that big third inning situation as it stands right now is troublesome for the Hawks bases loaded nobody out for Perry great hitter for the Gophers up at 326. Good slugging percentage of 533. Whitlock ready. Out of the windup. Jack pitches. Low and in. Out of the zone. Yeah, right now, Minnesota just doing a great job of saying, look, I don't think you can throw, I don't think you can throw the breaking stuff for a strike unless we swing at it. 1-0 is waved at and missed, 1-1. One and one. Good pitch from Whitlock there. He didn't get cheated on that cut, that's for sure. Good swing by Perry. Yeah, Jack in the windup lets both runners get a huge running start. Swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. And Perry's helped out here. Those are, those are balls that... You know, the two hitters that walked took those pitches. Here comes the one-two from Whitlock. Drifted in. Just a touch low as well. Good spot, but not enough for Perry to help us there. Two balls, two strikes. Worked inside the whole time with him. And just like with Council, what's his out pitch here? Two-two. Popped up, left side, Tello's giving it a look. He's running over towards the half wall and it'll get out of play. Have to do it again. And Jack might have got away with one there. That was, that was the 75 mile an hour Frisbee that caught a lot of the center third of the plate. At about bell high. Mm -hmm. Two balls, two strikes. Whitlock out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Lined foul over to the left. So you gave him the frisbee. He gave him the fastball on the outside of the part of the plate. If you can show one that shows a lot of plate here but dives to the inside, that's probably your sequencing. There you go. Another 2-2. Two -two. Outside, ball three. Tried to come in the back door and... Kept it out there, full count, nobody out, bases loaded. Whitlock on the rubber, he's ready, here's the 
popped up left center. It's Peterson in front of the track. He'll make the grab for the first out, and the runner will tag and score from third. The Gophers lead it 8-7. to seven. Huh. No other advancement by the runners. We'll see Coach Heller come out of the dugout now and make a call to the bullpen. Jack Whitlock is done in the fourth. 8-7 Minnesota. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Let's be honest. We all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at High V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the High V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the High V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for High V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Eight seven Minnesota. They've taken the lead. They've scored the last eight after Iowa raced out to a seven nothing lead in the second. Gophers up one. Runners at first and second. And one out. New pitcher into the game for the Hawks. Right-handed senior from Leclaire, Iowa. The Hawks go to Jack Young. Two and zero on the season with a save in his eleven appearances. A one ERA. Nine innings pitched. Four hits. Two runs. Just one earned. Three walks and thirteen strikeouts. Opponents hitting Jack Young around at a 133 batting average. I don't think this is the role or the time that uh, Iowa expected to be bringing him into the game. Really unfortunate uh, disgust. The position that Iowa was in, up 7 nothing. You're getting into Minnesota's bullpen, and now it, the Hawks are behind the eight ball. Right. Uh, in terms of in terms of their bullpen, yeah, you're you're on your third pitcher. Minnesota's on, Minnesota's on two, and uh, and Thorstenson's looking uh, had had some trouble, but but got out of it with a couple of double plays. And well, so. and when you look at it, Whitlock only credited with a third of an out, and that that is or a third of an inning rather. Uh, that. Uh, that is way under what you'd expect for him. Now the situation may be different or what he's allowed already in this inning is different, but it's not like Jack Young's gonna give you three or four innings. No, you're you're gonna you're gonna end up going somewhere else and you're gonna need whether it's whether it's Buter or Watts or or Elliott to come in and, and eat innings for you. Not something we think we, we thought we'd be saying with the way the game started. Iowa down now eight to seven in the fourth. Young is ready. First pitch ripped into left center. Huxdorf sprinting. That's going to get down all the way to the wall, too. One run is in. Here comes the second, and it is 10-7. Just can't believe it. I cannot believe what we're witnessing. Ten in a row for the Gophers. Hawks down three. Yeah, that's 101 off the bat. Just ripped into left center field. It's ambushing a ambushing a pitch there. One out double. I mean, it's not only the, it's not only the hit total, the, hit se the seven right. hits, but it's five extra base the hits. Ninja. So I mean, they're not, uh, they're not fooling around with, with oh, here's a cheap single here, a cheap single there. They are, they are hitting the ball hard. One out for Mazenga. Young is ready. First pitch, low and in. Ball one. Man. Well, you really didn't want to take the last six off, six innings off of hitting anyway, but don't have a choice now. Yeah, now you don't have a choice. Young's 1-0 pitch is hit down the line, foul 
in left. And just compare some of the numbers, Minnesota to Iowa. The Gophers came in with 42 doubles. Iowa had 56. 26 home runs for Minnesota, 27 for Iowa. They've got the advantage in the extra base hit category to this point. 10 to 7 Gophers, swing and a miss. Good pitch from Young. Yeah, I mean, Iowa slugs 501, Minnesota slugs 450. Uh, you know, 427 on base percentage to 378 on base percentage. You'd, especially with a 7 0 lead, you'd think that was. Plenty for Brody, but again. One, two is low. But it, it's it's just that, that especially with a 7-0 lead. Free, free bases are the only thing that can really hurt you. You know, they, they, they can't hit, they can't hit a seven run home run. But boy, they can pile it up with free bases. Two two from Jack. Swing and a miss, throw it right by him, two down. That's a Hawkeye t-shirt. That's a good 92 mile an hour fastball there, but need to find a way. Find a way out here now. Fielder, Boston, Maryland. Maybe we need to do something up here, John. My guess is you're gonna have <laughs> Coach Sutherland have a firm chat when everybody comes back in. I was curious about the same thing. See Marilla. Young's first pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Three runs across for the Gophers. They lead it 10 to 7 on seven hits. Runner at second base and two outs. Young fires outside. You're seeing Jack throw more fastballs than he normally throws. And I think really Minnesota's. They've hit some fastballs hard, but they've sat on spin and they've hit it hard when it's when it's come into the zone. One one pitch, swing and a miss. One and two now. Young looks in for the sign. He's got it from Cop. Here comes the one two. Ground ball to Tello. Diving backhand stop. Long throw to first. Got him. How about that run saving stop by Raider Tello? All right. Three runs come across for the Gophers, and they lead it 10 to 7. Hawks got to have a comeback now. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So, make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. A turn of events, Iowa trailing Minnesota now 10-7. to The Gophers have ripped off a dime piece all by themselves, all in a row, 10 runs in a row for the Golden Gophers. And uh, plenty of time here for Iowa, plenty uh, baseball left to be played, but down by Ready three, need to punch right back. Tello, Cop, and Huckstorf. A lot of power, but do your one-ninth and... Find a way on. Tello will be the first one up to see Thorstenson. Tall, stocky left-hander is ready. First pitch to Raider. Right down the middle, strike one. How often do you see the good defensive play lead off the next inning? Yes. 
usually uh, the Hawks have had a couple of opportunities from a defensive play that have sent him into the dugout. I think back to the the second. It was Peterson to Tello to gun down the runner at third and the second. Then Raider just made an outstanding play to end the top of the fourth. He's trying to find his way on. He's down 0-2 in the count now. Thorstenson out of the windup. The left-hander delivers outside. Raider watched it go right by. Approaching two hours of game time, and we are only in the bottom of the fourth because the game's 10 to 7 on a Friday. <laughs> Very rare to see this happen. 1 2 pitch to Tello, grounded to second base. Council's got it, and he throws it over to first, out number one. Council with the old school high socks. He's not missing that one. Nope. Davis <laughs> Cup. Well, it's all about chipping away. As we were talking about, plenty of time, plenty of baseball left. You'd rather get into this deficit a little bit uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, but you just you want to keep having good at bats. You know, making an out is fine. Just but keep having good at bats. Cop takes high and out. Thorstenson ready with the 1-0. Here it is. Cop shoots it into center and down for a base hit. One hops to the center fielder, Hokinson, and Cop has his second hit of the day. That one was a little more firmly struck than his first one. Yeah. Both, both have exactly the same outcome. Yep. Brings up center Kyle Huxdorf, Iowa's center fielder. Thorstenson threw four innings against New Mexico back in February. That's his career high, so... You know, he, he can string it out a little bit if you if you don't create some trouble for him. First pitch to Huck, he swings at it and knocks it foul over to the left. It's a pretty decent pitcher for Minnesota. He, he looks all right. I mean, as he gets into you know the second and third inning of work here, Iowa needs to start making him work. Just 33 pitches before Huck's at bat started here. A one. Huck takes it for a strike. Change up low portion of the zone. Yeah, I mean, that's a pitch you want Huck to take. I mean, that's even with his speed, he's going to pound that in the turf and going to be out of the inning again with a double play. Yep. Hawks have hit into two double plays today. Huckstorf in the box. The 0-2 in the dirt. Keep Cop at first base. Good discipline from Kyle. Good job there from Hunt. Uh, the ball was in the dirt, but he was able to really keep it corralled and didn't let it bounce away at all to keep Cop at first. Iowa had some good two-strike hitting in the first couple of innings. Here's the one-two. Ground ball left side through into the outfield. And a two-strike base hit for Kyle Huckstorf. That part of the game has been pretty good for the Hawks. They're not giving up in at-bats. Yeah, beat a little bit of a shift there, too, as shortstop Larson was shaded a little bit up the middle. Huck turned, hit it hard. 105 off the bat, through the hole. Minnesota scored the last 10. Even if the Hawks get just one or two here, that feels... Uh, imperative. Well, yeah, the, mandatory. We, we talk all the time about validating your your, especially if you're going to hang a crooked one up there. You know, you hang ten straight up there. Keep validating that, and, and it gets really troublesome for Iowa. So to kind of just to flip the momentum over a little bit, you know, if Minnesota runs right back in the dugout and grabs the bat again, it's like they're still all hot and on fire. They they're ready to go. See, so you, you got to keep them out in the field for a little bit here. You need to give them a cup of cold water. Reese Moore is up for the Hawks. Runners at first and second, one out. Left-hander deals to Moore. Strike one at the knees. That's a pitch you want. You know, with, with no strikes, that's a pitch you want Reese taking. Yep. If it's a flat pitch without all that movement on it, Reese can go down there and get it. Here comes the 0-1. 
Ground ball, right side, backhand stopped by the second baseman. Double play. Hawks have hit with their third double play, and that'll end the fourth. 10 7 Minnesota. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance, because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. At the game or at home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Elliot Cadu Lanou is the new Hawkeye pitcher. Elliot's 3-1 and one on the season, seven appearances. He's got three starts, 7.45 ERA, nine and two-thirds innings, 10 hits, eight runs have all been earned, six walks, 11 strikeouts. He's given up four home runs, but those were a lot of Georgia. Before we get to the start of the game, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball. Four innings complete, 10-7 Minnesota. Iowa's grounded into three double plays, so... Lots of lots of rally, lots of pressure. Iowa's kind of left it out there a little bit, and Minnesota's had a response. Uh, as John mentioned, Minnesota scored the last 10 runs. Iowa's left five runners on. Minnesota's left just one. As they've, they've had a guy on, they've scored him. So we'll see Elliott. Now he'll be the innings eater, hopefully. That would be an ideal situation, yes. 10-7, Gophers in the fifth. Right fielder, Josh Fitzgerald. And they'll send uh, Fitzgerald, Hokinson, and Hunt to the box. Fitzgerald clubbed the two-run homer the last time we saw him. Right-handed hitter. Swing and a miss. Elliott threw it by him. Yeah, he's got a double and a home run, so he's been, he's been on point. Left-handed freshman is ready. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. A zero is necessary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two floats high. I'm not sure whether that falls into the ultimate captain obvious or the understatement of the week. E either way, it's uh, yeah, Iowa's got to find a way here to, to anything to find some momentum. You saw there. Thorstenson just came flying off the mound with the. Here's one lined over Seegers at short. He got into shallow left, jumped up, suspended in the air, but it just got over. Just a soft liner, 81 mile an hour, looped over his head. Just couldn't. Uh, Center fielder Chris couldn't get Lincoln. back a step or couldn't get up another. Probably needed two or three inches to, yeah. to actually get it in the glove. He could have touched it with another inch or two maybe. but Michael needed some springs or some stilts, something to get him off the ground a little bit. All right, here's Hokinson. Left-handed hitter, close stance. Elliott fires. Here's a drag bunt to the first base side. Glove flip to first. Got him. Good play. Cadu Lanou tosses it over to Mitchell at first. Straight out of the glove. One down. What an outstanding bunt there. You've been calling for Iowa to do that this year. I really have, and that was a great bunt on his part. And I think we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a challenge here. And that might have been the first time you saw Andy Nelson's uh, 
position changes around affect the defensive move as both he and Elliott were kind of going for it. Uh, either full on charge it. Actually, they decide not to challenge it. Probably best. Either full on charge it and go get it or or stay back. But there was that little bit of mix. And, you know, what made it hard for Elliott is, you know, being left handed that ball down there. They did not challenge. They changed their mind. So they sent everybody back. Which I don't know why they was the runner at first. Yeah, that's for some reason. Minnesota's got a runner at first base. Minnesota screwed that up. Their runner should be at second. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm, that's a Fitzgerald is the runner at first. It's a hundred percent mistake on on Minnesota's part, and it, it probably a mistake on Iowa's part for not tagging the guy out when he ran back, because there was no reason for him to go back. Swing and a miss for so, Hunt. So what happens on the challenge is the runner stays in place. And so, so when the batter, you know, the, when the batter bunted it, he stays at first base. So the runner stayed at second. And then when Minnesota decided not to challenge, it's another swing and a miss. They sent both runners back. The guy goes to the dugout, and the guy on second goes back to first, even though he did not need to go back to first. So they just gave up 90 feet for no apparent reason. I've never seen that. And I was, had they recognized what was going on, because of course nobody did, could have just tagged him out, and that'd have been it. Runner takes off. The 0-2 is waved at and missed. Throw down to second base is just a bit late. But That's a strikeout right, of Hunt is out number two. Which is fine. Technically, you should be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm Jake still Anderson. puzzled by that. I am not doubting you in the slightest, John. I just, I have never seen that. Tell me any other explanation I for can't. that. I <laughs> can't. Unless... Well, I mean, there's no way they call that the runner for or the batter for any sort of interference that sends them back. The, the stat cast has Hokinson out on batter's interference. We will uh, okay. consult Sammy B in the room next door and see what's up with that. Because I, mean, well, I guess maybe he was out of the running lane. Oof. And that was why they decided not to challenge, because when they conferred, they decided he was going to get punched out anyway. Kadu Lanou drops in a beautiful bender for a strike. 66 miles an hour. Ah, it appears as though Hokinson was out of the box when he made contact with the ball. Here's a ground ball to the right side. Chopper foul at first. So Hokinson, when he bunted on that drag, okay. he was out of the box and he was out instantly then. Okay. According to... SID Sam next door. Thank you, Sam. Wonder if the home plate umpires flashed him a sign of that, or but he did when he ran up to to make the bond. It, I guess it doesn't surprise me seeing it that he was all the way in the front of the oof, all the way in the front of the the zone there. But still an outstanding bond. 10-7 Minnesota in the fifth. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second is Fitzgerald. Kadu Lanou ready for the 2-2. Lined into right center and down for another base hit. It's 11-7. Hawks just cannot keep the Gophers off the board right now. 11 runs in a row. That's Larson at the bottom of their order. The Hawks haven't got him out today. Second baseman, Brady. Counts. He's just one for one, but well, I was walked him twice. Yeah, I mean, two free bases. He scored both times with the free bases. Now you got to keep him from scoring because every time he's been up, he's gotten on, and every time he's gotten on, he scored. So you definitely need to break that chain. Top of the order for Council. Great job by Davis Cop behind the plate, out of his stance, dove over to the right to stop it. Ball one. I did not have 11 to 7 on my bingo card. At, for any point of the game, for a final score, for even getting into tomorrow, yeah, uh, for, let alone in the fifth. For, yeah, forget not even halfway through the game yet. We're, we're an out away from the halfway point. And it's not a good 11 to 7, John. <laughs> <laughs> Hawks down four after leading 7 0 through two. Ohio State up on Purdue, three to two, bottom of the fourth. Not sure what the Hawks want there. 
They play both. Probably doesn't matter. Yeah. Georgia six to nothing on Tennessee. Hung a six spot in the top of the second inning. As we know, a lot of baseball left <laughs> for a game that's in the second. 1-1 one, one is the count. The pitch to Council. Grounded foul over to the left again. 1-2. and two. Wichita State helps out the Hawks. Ball State helps out the Hawks. Northern Illinois does not. Made it close. Scored the last seven runs of the game, but lost 8-7. to seven. Oof. Virginia helping out the Hawks early. Now the Hawks need to help themselves, most importantly. Yep. Elliott ready with the 2-2, two -two, and we'll wait a minute, throw it over to first base. Two outs, Iowa will have Wilmus, Seegers, and Mitchell due up when we get to the bottom of the fifth. Helicopter banking right over the field here. 2-2 two -two is high and out. Let's see, steep angle of attack, right? That is something you don't see every day. Full count now. Runner will be going from first base. Try a whip throw over. Uh, Larson has one stolen base on the season. That throw was probably to keep him from getting too far off on the full count delivery. Uh, continuing to hold him on even though they know he's going. This ball is lifted down the line in left and that will get foul. Scoreboard shows two and two. Two two because he wasn't going there. You're just becoming pessimistic in your old age. I don't know what Elliott's out pitch is here with Council, but he's going to need to find one. Shallow fly ball to center. Huxdorf is there. Kyle's got it one run, two hits, for the no third out. But another run comes across from Minnesota. 11 to 7. Over. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Iowa needs to get back on the scoreboard. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. New pitcher into the game for Minnesota. The Gophers have an 11 to 7 lead in the bottom of the fifth. They'll go with the right-handed freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Kyle Remington. 0 and 1 on the season in nine appearances with a 5.62 ERA, 19. Or I'm sorry, 16 innings, 17 hits, 10 runs have all been earned, six walks, 15 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 266 against him. He's given up five extra base hits. Has yet to give up a home run on the season. Remington's arsenal is going to be somewhat standard fare. Fastball will be in the low 90s. It's got a slider and a changeup. Uh, but again, that fastball's got a little bit of a little bit of spray to it. So, well, freshman competing in a big stage right now. First pitch strike to. Ben Wilmus. These three guys need to be Iowa's table setters, Wilmus, Seegers, and Mitchell. Opportunity to do so, get on base. All three of them have at one point today. 0-1 pitch to Wilmus. High and out. That ball is coming in fast, isn't it? 93 on both of those pitches. Big high leg kick, and the ball just kind of whips around right behind it. He operates out of the windup. Here comes the 1-1. Outside, ball two. Good job by Wilmus not to go after it. 
know, Minnesota fans are that one. And it's if you've been watching, you know he's not calling that a strike. Greg Harmon's been great behind the plate. Here comes a two-one. Wilmus popped it up. Left side, left fielder giving chase, still running, still running, and he caught it just in foul ground. Out number one. Ben launched that one almost straight up in the air. Shortstop Michael Seegers. Seegers will get a look at him now. Minnesota with 11 runs on nine hits. Iowa, seven runs, eight hits. Bottom of the fifth. Michael walked and scored in the second. Later ground out. He lines this to left, and it's caught. One pitch for another out, two down. All right, Gable Mitchell looks to get things started with two outs. Gable Mitchell. See if Gable takes a pitch here to break this up just a little bit. Longer at bat from Wilmis, but Seegers went first pitch hunting and got a breaking ball instead of a fastball. Strike one to Mitchell, low outside corner. Haven't seen that called that often today. No, that one's tended to be, although that one's that one's been right on the line. Mm -hmm. Oh, one Mitchell squares to bunt, pushed it foul over to the left. Nothing in two. I'm impressed by this freshman. He's fearless up there. Exit below on the bunt was 57 miles an hour, so that's probably not a great bunt. <laughs> Just a bit too much, huh? No balls, two strikes. Remington ready. Out of the wind up the pitch. Line drive down into the left and foul. Yeah, I'm trying to rearrange things, do things different up here. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the next step is. Mm. O2, that's high and out. It's a bad juju going on right now for the Hawks. Well, and it hasn't. I mean, other than this inning, it hasn't been for lack of opportunity. It's been the untimely you know, two runners on first and second double play. Two yep. runners on double play. One two to Mitchell, rips it into right for a base hit. Two out single for Gable. He's on for the third time today. Yeah, I guess in the first inning, the good news was there was only one guy on when they grounded into the double play. Yeah, those have been first certainly uh, swing plays of the game. Iowa's made some individual efforts defensively that have maybe saved a run or, or ended an inning, but Minnesota's got the run-saving inning-ending plays that have thwarted any rally that the Hawks are trying to put together. We'll see Andy Nelson in the box now with two outs. First pitch to Andy. Takes it for a strike right below the letters. Throw that again. I think Andy swings at it. Although it's an off speed, so it was kind of soft coming in there. But yeah, And again, Andy's showing good discipline. At, oh, oh, not a pitch you want to go jumping on. A one is a bit lower and called a strike. Andy trying to figure out Remington, but quickly down 0-2. I mean, do you dare throw it a third time if you're Remington, or now do you heat him up with a 93-mile-an-hour fastball and see if you can sneak one past him? I think the ladder's coming. Here comes the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Third time's a charm for him, too. He put that thing on an elevator, went from the third floor to the second floor to the ground level first floor, and he gets Nelson down on strikes. We'll go to the sixth. Iowa trailing 11-7. to This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. 
That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. 11 to 7, Minnesota in the opener this weekend. They've got the four run lead in the sixth. Good part of their order coming up too. 2 3 4, Elliot Cadu Lanou out there for the Hawks. Perry stands in. First pitch from Elliott is on the outside corner for strike one. Oof. A little bit of an expansion, John, you think? Small. Again, just based on what he's called so far, mm -hmm. yes. Too far outside from Elliott there, ball one. Perry is one for two today. He's got three RBIs, though. 1-1 one, one pitch from Cadu Lanou, up and in, ball two. Perry's the starting third baseman for Minnesota. Takes low, ball three. I mean, again, as obvious as it sounds, Minnesota's just had, they've had better at bats. You know, they, they really haven't chased at all outside of the zone. They've done a good job making Iowa get in. There's a strike at the knees, three and two. And then punished Iowa when they come in the zone with anything soft. Here's a full count pitch, high and out, ball four. Been trying to think about what Elliott's strikeout pitch would be. Right. Well, the hard part, you, you know, while the variance in speed is, is pretty cool, it, it does give hitters a chance to sit on fastball and then fight off that spinny breaking ball because even if you're fooled by it, you can still kind of regroup a little bit when you see it pop out of his hand because it does kind of it pops up with some loop to it mm -hmm. Weber Niels is in he doubled a couple of runs in his last time up it's pretty much every Minnesota hitter at this point isn't it yeah ton of extra base hits just gets a piece of the first one that he sees from Elliott. Fouls it off over to the left. You know that the Hawks can strike quickly from anybody in their order, in their lineup. So now it's crucial to keep the Gophers where they're at. Fouled back, it's nothing in two. Yeah, you know, we talked about it in pregame. Coach Heller talked about it, you know, that you know, building on the momentum of, of last week in Purdue, and you felt like, okay, hey, here we go. And Boy, talk about the chair getting pulled out from under you. Fastball high. And so then there's the what lessons did you learn from, you know, Minnesota had, you know, hasn't been anywhere, you know, they haven't been even remotely chirpy like Purdue was, but they've still punched you. you know, yeah. Metaphorically, you've been punched a couple times now. 1-2 has popped up, right side. Cop's going to give it a look, but it'll find the seats a few rows back. He didn't make the catch, but he made a good effort. Really good effort. Right. Young man, about six, seven rows back. Moved over a few seats, didn't, protected a young lady. Didn't shy away from it, went right after it. I mean, it was E-Fan, but... So. Yeah, E-Fan. <laughs> had, had a chance to make the play. See if Elliott can get a strikeout. The one-two. Grounded foul in the box as Minnesota batters are tough. They hang in there. I mean, a hundred. I mean, they struck, they've struck out on the season five more times than Iowa has in three less games. Add another one to it. Elliott gets a strike out there. That's a good pitch off the plate and a little bit of break on it. Right. Good fastball. It was off the edge. It's close enough that he might get, might get the call there. 
but now you got to stay focused and keep keep going. I mean, On to the next. Iowa's been, you know, been in a spot where okay, hey, we got an out, we got two, and then all heck breaks loose. Mazenga's in the box. Throw it over to Nelson for a moment. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing, both teams are 6 for 14 with runners on base. Mm. Minnesota, Breaking ball inside. Minnesota's just been really loud. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're... What's the extra base hit tally, John? 5 to 2. Iowa came out hot. That's the surprising element. It's 11 to 7 in the sixth. They're starting to get to the later part of the game. Here's the 1-0 from Kadu Lanou. Fouled off. And there's five guys in a row in the Minnesota order that have RBIs. And four of the five have more than one. So, I mean, they've just... They've done damage two through six in the batting order. 1-1 one, one is a fastball outside, ball two. I, I just don't think the Hawks want to see Fitzgerald this inning. He comes up, he'll be going for the cycle. <laughs> He's got a, a single, double, and a home run. And if he comes up, that means there's some runners on. And He's been outstanding for Minnesota today. Two balls and a strike. ECL is ready. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball three. We could just see that as it left his hand. It was just kind of pulled it over. And like Brody was doing early, pulling it into the left-handed batter's box. Elliot just kind of ripped it into the right-handed batter's box. Short lead at first base. Here's the 3-1. Ball four. Outside again. So now a couple runners get on for the Gophers via the free base walk. And those, those are getting up there for Minnesota. They've just drawn their sixth of the game. And we'll see Coach Heller. Iowa going to the bullpen. And making a change. Top of the sixth, Minnesota 11, Iowa 7. Back after this pitching change break. Sockeye baseball from Learfield. Let's be honest. We all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. New pitcher into the game for Iowa, right-handed redshirt junior from Granite Bay, California, the hard-throwing Zach Volker. 1-0 on the season in nine appearances, has a save as well. 6.75 ERA, 10 and two-thirds innings, 11 hits, eight runs all earned, six walks, 10 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 268 against Zach. Has given up four home runs, though. He looks to be the... Uh, the next lucky contestant in what Hawkeye pitcher can put up a zero. Yes. Runners at first and second, though, for the Gophers with one out. Pitching has hurt the Hawks today. Felt like Iowa was getting back on track in that regard and not got it done today, giving up 11 runs to Minnesota through five and a third. And, uh, I mean, the free base number is... It's, it's bad, but it's not excessive. The problem has been the free bases came in front of hits. And so you, you compounded a problem and then just couldn't really ever figure out how to get out of it. I mean, Minnesota, six for 10 with two outs, five for eight with runners in scoring position. Uh, I mean, 
just all kinds of all kinds of good stuff on their side of the ledger there iowa hasn't fairly equal numbers in most of those cases just again not as loud marilla is the batter for the golden gophers volker comes set first pitch hit him oh boy and we got your guy that brings up Fitzgerald, the most dangerous Golden Gopher hitter today. Right fielder, Josh three for Fitzgerald. three with a single, a double, and a home run. Yeah, we've said this uh, about a couple Iowa hitters early in the game. Boy, if there's a guy the Iowa dugout didn't want to see roll up to the plate. Uh, this is a battle of power, right? Uh, Fitzgerald has a home run. Volker throws it hard. Got to miss it, Zach. 11-7 to seven Gophers in the sixth. One out, bases loaded. A K would come in handy. Yeah. Volker's ready. He deals. Up and in. Ball one. Spun Fitzgerald out of the box. Fitzgerald batting 359 due to his great start today. Check swing. It's fouled off. Over to the right, and it's one and one. It's a good spot for Volker to go up and in, it, it, in the zone, too. Yeah, it's a good pitch. I mean, it's it's probably a called strike. It's probably right at the top of, of an umpire's called zone. But One one from Volker. Ooh, inside. He good had, thing that had late break on it. Yeah, he had no intention of bailing out of the way. He was going to take his dose and drive in a run. Two balls and a strike. Bases loaded for Minnesota. The pitch. High ball three. I wish I had something. You know, usually I'm the I'm the pick you up guy, and I'm I'm struggling for optimism this, right now. I'll find it. We'll get there. Three balls and a strike. Volker's delivery. Swing and a miss. Three and two. 92 mile an hour fastball right at the top of the strike zone. Still just one out, so you gotta you gotta find a way to to get this one. That ball isn't gonna get grounded into a double play very often either. Full count pitch from Volker. Inside ball four walked him. Four free bases in the inning for the Gophers, and they've scored in four innings in a row, and including the last 12. It's 12 to 7. And they're not done yet. I mean, still no, just, they're, just they're one out in this up. inning. I'm shocked. <laughs> bases loaded for Hokinson. Volker from the windup. First pitch. Strike on the low outside corner. Ooh, caught a break there. Iowa down five now in the sixth. Zach working quickly. Here it comes. Inside almost hit him. He guided that one. Hokinson today is 0 for 2. He's got a run scored. Was hit by a pitch in the third. Wines and fires fouled off over to the left. And again, Volker in a spot to get a strikeout. One and two. His batter interference seems like it was an hour ago and it was last inning. Yeah. Had that nice drag bunt, but was called out of the box. Volker winds and fires the one two. Ground ball foul Ooh. at third. That would have been trouble. Third base umpire Cody Oaks had to hop out of the way of that. Boy, I'm not. Uh, well, he's got a much better view than I have of it. But just a, as you watched it track down that line, it was. Uh, I, w I didn't have to worry about getting out of the way, I guess, is, is, is <laughs> yeah. the one advantage I had. Added element. Here comes another one, two from Volker in the dirt. Picked up by Cop. Two and two. That's the other thing Minnesota's done such a good job of is is even though they've struck out, they've 
they've battled and they've fouled balls off, so Iowa feels like they have to make such a perfect pitch to get the strikeout. 2-2 two -two is hit into left center. It will tail away from Huxdorf and get to the base of the wall. They'll put on the brakes at the third runner at third base. Two runs score, and it's 14-7. I didn't think Minnesota was going to score two touchdowns today. Certainly didn't think they were going to outscore their football team. <laughs> Man. Catcher, Sam Hunt. Even GB sounds depressed now. And just burning through the bullpen. Coach Heller's out again to go get Volker now. Somebody else coming in for Iowa. Incredible. And not in a positive way right now. 14 to 7. Minnesota's got the lead. We'll take a pitching change break. We're back. Eh, maybe in just a moment. Coach Heller, hold on a minute. He's just talking for now, but everybody's out of the dugout. I believe that there will be a change. He's waiting and giving him a couple more warm ups until the umpire makes him grab him. Yeah. Minnesota was down 7 0 after the second. Seven in the third, three in the fourth, one in the fifth, and they've plated three now in the sixth. 14-7. Gophers. And the Hawks will make the pitching change. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Another pitching change for Iowa in the six this time. 14 to seven, the Gophers lead it. Iowa turns to the sophomore right-hander, Gannon Archer. Five appearances on the season, a 771 ERA, four and two-thirds innings, seven hits, four runs have all been earned. Two walks, 10 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at a 350 clip. Arch's fastball will be in the low 90s. He's got a change up and a slider that he works off that. And boy, it'll be just one out here in the inning. It'll be his job to make sure the score stays what it is here. Still runners on second and third. Three innings from Brody, a third of an inning from Whitlock, two thirds of an inning from Jack Young, an inning and a third from Elliot Cadu Lanou. Volker comes in, does not record an out, and the Hawks are on to their sixth pitcher in Gannon Archer in the sixth inning. That, that unfortunately tells the story and a total flip from the second inning when we were saying that that's what Minnesota was going to have to do after the Hawks jumped out to a 7 nothing lead. Yeah, you felt like, you know, and Iowa had a chance there with, with um, you know, you're in the, you know, you're in the second inning and, and you're, you're piling on some runs and you, you get stopped and finished there on a, on a pop-up, and then you go to the third, and you think, okay, hey, we got this. You put put two runners on base with one out, and you ground into a double play. And that was even after Minnesota scored seven, so you felt like you could try to steal some of the momentum back. And instead, you know, and then you put two runners on in the fourth, and Minnesota, you ground into a double play. You put a runner on in the fifth, and you and you don't get it. You don't get a run. And, Minnesota just hasn't slowed down, and, and Iowa hasn't been able to come up with a timely hit since the second inning. They've got two in scoring position with one out. Hunt is in the box. Ball one from Archer. Infield comes in for Iowa, trailing 14 to seven in the sixth. Oh, 
Out of the windup, Archer's ready. The 1 0 is outside and high. Ball two. If you want a positive, Remington probably needs to go warm up again. He... <laughs> Let's start there. We'll, that, that's the positive we can try to build on, John. <laughs> She's been sitting here for a half hour, 40 minutes. 2 0. Blooped into shallow left. That's going to get down. One run is in. Here comes a strong throw to the plate. It's up the line. Another couple runs come home. 16 to 7. 62 mile an hour off the bat. That's a pretty good pitch from Arch that gets no reward. Get it all out of the system. Boy, you just felt Iowa coming home from Purdue. Jake Larson. Had figured some things out and building some momentum. And now a few more questions. <laughs> 16 to 7 in the sixth. Strike one from Archer to Larson. Oh. Larson should be asking some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not like me? Something I said? Oh, one pitch on its way home. That catches the outside corner, nothing in two. I mean, it's just Iowa pitching down to 55% strikes again in the game. So you're kind of struggling that way. Archer's 0-2 is hit on the ground to third. Raiders got it. He'll go to second for one, on to first, double play. Well, in the top of the sixth inning, 5-4-3. Five, five more runs for Minnesota. It's 16-7. to seven. We're back for the bottom of the sixth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and take to work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full-service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, Minnesota leads it 16 to 7 in the sixth inning. A statement I did not expect you to say this weekend. No, no. Uh, along with the coaches and the players and pretty pretty shocked with just how this one's going but uh got to keep playing see if the hawks can chip away bottom of the six down by nine peterson tello and cop will come to the plate for iowa and it is remington back out for another inning of work the right-hander deals to pd strike one on the outside corner he must be bored now because mm -hmm. we're starting to we're starting to expand. Oh one, PD swings at it, missed it, low and out. You fooled a bit there. Yeah, and then we expand. Yes. Again, kind of the same thing here. You just stay patient. It can come in the zone. Easy to say, but oh two, that's high. Good job by Sam to lay off. The leg kick's like a rocket kick. <laughs> there just, we go. I got know a, that reference. It's got a little flick at the end. Yeah. <laughs> point it, the toe. Point the toe. It gets up high, <laughs> and then he just, I mean, then he levers it over. 
Fastball high and out, ball two. I've been impressed by uh, the freshman Remington. Did a nice job, allowed a hit in the fifth, but stranded him. 2-2, Petey popped it up right to second base. Oh, it's carrying a bit to shallow center. It is Council, the second baseman, who makes the play for out number one. That little cue ball drove in two runs for them last inning. Yeah. <laughs> Third the way the pattern of the game going, the way of the pattern of the game is going, Iowa can't score this inning. They need to make sure Minnesota gets a zero so Iowa can score then the bottom. A run has been scored in every inning, just never by both teams. Yeah, isn't that something? Tello swings at the first pitch, drives it to right, down the line. That is foul and out of play over towards the batting cage. And you may have oversold that. Driven to right. They're tracked by the first baseman in the foul ground. 16 to 7, John. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm only looking to have a laugh at this point because it's 16 to 7, so I called you out on it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have. Been. You know you can get away with that with me. <laughs> uh, Minnesota's got 11 hits. They've got 16 runs. They've scored the last 16. That... Uh, it's, it's just mind-blowing. It really is. 1-1, one, one, Tello takes for a strike on the outside corner. 1-2. and two. And that is down to the very bottom of the strike zone. Remington's ready out of the windup. Here comes the 1-2 to Tello. Outside. But I'm not going to start picking on him. That's the very least of our problems right now. Right, yeah. Back-to-back -back Fridays. That Iowa has just, frankly, not looked good. Full I count for Tello. I don't even know how you, I mean, you jump out to this, the, the seven to nothing lead, and I just don't even know. 3-2, Raider shoots it foul over the right. I don't even know how you flip that switch the other way, the way it's happened. Base is empty and one out for Tello. Remington's full count pitch. High chopper left side. It's the third baseman who fields it on a hop. He'll throw it on the run, two down. a really strong play there from Perry. He doesn't cut that off or he doesn't get it up high there. It's going to be a much tougher play, but by getting over there, he's able to catch the hop waist high. Victor Davis cut. Tello not being the super speediest was going to have to really hustle to beat it out. Two outs for Davis Cop. Cop has a couple of hits today for Iowa. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Good off speed from Remington. Dropped out of the zone low and Cop put a good swing on it but missed it. Here's the 0 1. Low and out. Couple more games with Minnesota this weekend. Tomorrow, first pitch at 2 02. The game is televised on Big Ten Network. Sunday, 105, first pitch. Here's a 1-1. One, one. Low, ball two. Not that you don't want to listen to us, but Connor Onion and Danon Hughes, former Hawkeye Hawkeye hero, will be on the call there. Danon's in the house today if he hasn't decided to leave already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two do a great job. Really strong baseball duo. Connor's a multi-sport guy, too, man. He, he calls everything. Looking forward to seeing them tomorrow. We'll be on site, which is somewhat of a rarity with Big Ten baseball. 3-1 to Cop. He rips it into left field for a base hit. Two-out single for Davis. If we talk loud, maybe we can get on Big Ten Network tomorrow because we'll be up here in the booth with him. Yes. <laughs> 
get excited and talk loud and uh, get caught up on the mic there. Center fielder Kyle Huckstore. Sometimes our calls get looped into the BTN Plus folks over to our right. I heard Connor do a, uh, a field hockey match this fall. And I asked him, I'm like, how many of those have you done? It was really good. And he said, one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's good study work there to get terms right. It was it was really good work. Yeah. I've called a few field hockey games. The, it, it, it took me quite a quite a handful of those to start to where you got comfortable with some of the base stuff that goes on. Broadcasting's a little harder of a job than most people give credit for, I think. 1-0 to Huxdorf is fouled off over to the right. Iowa down 16-7, to seven, bottom of the sixth. Trying to chip away, but with two outs, Huxdorf have to start some two-out magic. Remington deals outside. Minnesota fans. Oh, come on, Minnesota fans. That's three balls outside. <laughs> Way out. That's not even close. Ugh. Huck needs to hit a passing car. That would help. Yeah. Get some juice back into the stadium. Here comes a 2-1. Ah, chased it, blowing out. He's really tried to stay off speed with Huck and got some help there. We'll see if... I'm him. I throw that same pitch again, and I don't come into the strike zone unless I have to on the 3 2 pitch. Remington has his sign. He comes set. Here's a 2 2. Ground ball left side. This will kick foul. He came back to the fastball, and he came back to the strike zone, so he just completely ignored me. But now he'll get an opportunity to follow my pattern. Yeah, now look out for that, Kyle. Even at two, the pitch to Kyle popped up shallow center. Hokinson's got it for the third out. But we're through six. Minnesota leads at 16 to seven. This is Hawkeye baseball from there. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Our try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball in the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete Jameson. rules and details at ielottery.com. Let's hear it for Bonnie Jameson and Brandon Bennett. Congratulations, you just won Top two of the seventh. Heroes Burritos. 16 to 7, Minnesota. All of our contestants will be taking home some. Top of the order coming to the plate for the Golden Let's Gophers. Let's give them a big round of applause. Great effort, gentlemen. I'm rooting for Gannon Archer to put a zero up here. Yes. The game within the game. If for no other reason, then we're two hours and 45 minutes into this game and we still have three innings to play. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. On a Friday. That's not supposed to happen on a Friday. That's supposed to happen on a midweek or maybe a Sunday in a team where the bullpens have been bludgeoned. Not on a Friday. Friday is supposed to be the three to two pitchers duel. Tennessee Tech leads Western Illinois 10 to nothing in the bottom of the second. That's gross. Archer to Council, strike one. Ohio State 7 to 2 over Purdue. Ah, oh, Morales struggling, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Georgia 8 to 2 over Tennessee. Seton Hall not helping the Hawks out again. Foul ball, nothing in two. 
Virginia 7 to 1 over Duke. That's, that's a, big. Yeah, that's a 9 versus 11 matchup in the country. Not uh, not seeds, not anything else in ranked in the country, so Archer looking for a strikeout, nothing in two. Council in the box. Gannon winds and fires. Just outside. Good pitch. Ball one. Before we get the world is over, it's devastating, we'll never bounce back. It's about 10 RPI spots for Iowa. So, again, you're not in a spot where you can afford to give up tons and tons of those, but it's it's still recoverable. This isn't this quite the same Minnesota team as it was last year where they were they were kind of buried in the 250s in their in their RPI. And even though Iowa lost a game to Minnesota last year, they still somehow managed to get a 2 seed and survive all that. So right. It's it's doable. More more to the point is just the uh, the unevenness of effort is the not effort. That's that's not fair. Unevenness of just strictly performance. 1 2 is high. You know, of of you know, being able to look so good, whether it's whether it's pitchers, hitters, it's it's a little bit of everything. You have defense, even. You know, that was that was last Friday's issue was, you know, it's three to two if if we make a play in the field in the fourth inning. Two two pitch popped up right side. Andy Nelson will give chase in foul territory from his post at first. Andy made the play right in front of the half wall. I'm right there with you, John. It's the, the consistency. Like you, you, it's getting to a point sometimes where you don't know which team's going to show up when you get to the ballpark. Third base. Well, yeah, and you know, unfortunately, most of that does does start around pitching. We've we've seen the hitting do that a little bit, but uh, you know, even with this, you know, what was it? Seven seven runs and and five hits in two innings, and and you know, the bats have kind of slowed down and. Iowa entered the game with a with a staff ERA of 5.84, which was eighth in the Big Ten. It's obviously gone up today, but well, and, and that's not a number you're used to seeing with Iowa. I mean, Iowa has what is it? Uh, you know, two of the last three Big Ten pitchers of the year. You could have argued, you know, you could have made a good argument for for Marcus Morgan last year. So you know, Iowa could have had three Big Ten pitchers of the year in a row. And so to have that type of staff ERA uh, is just not the way it usually rolls around here in Iowa City. Archer's 2-0 to Jake Perry is low for ball three. And again, at one point it was about two walks and eight strikeouts for Minnesota, and now it's seven walks and eight strikeouts. So. 3-0 from Archer. It's in there for a strike. The uh, Gophers have sent at least eight batters to the plate in three innings today. That seems good. Yep. I mean, if you're rooting for Minnesota, it seems good. Right. Iowa has the only three up, three down inning of the... Iowa pitching has the only three up, three down inning of the mm -hmm. game. Which the first one yeah. to start the game and, and got a three up three down in the second inning when the runner was thrown first out baseman Weber Neal. So it was Perry six, walks by the way. It was six up six down and and uh, well, Then to your point. Yeah, I sent eight batters three times in the last four innings if you want to be real technical about it yep. Neal's comes up for the Gophers top of the seventh inning Runner at first and one out. Archer fires. Outside corner. Whoa. Strike one. Outside corner of what oh, exactly? Oh, man. Good for Arch and the Hawks. It was a breaking ball. Perhaps, yep. perhaps it slid across the corner before it got outside. Objectively, though, for the majority of the game, for this has been a good zone from Greg Harmon. This oh, has been one of the better ones of 100, the season. Hundred percent. He's been he's been right in the zone again. It's not sixteen to seven because of the strike zone. No. There's a 
on the ground, left side, diving stop by Seegers. He'll throw to second for one, on to first, an outstanding double play by the Hawkeye infield, 6-4-3. And we'll stretch things out, headed to the bottom of the seventh. Minnesota leads it 16-7. Hey, Hawk fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny, seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all, Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny's a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Iowa comes to the plate in the bottom of the seventh with more Wilmus and Seegers facing a nine-run deficit in the bottom of the seventh. Nine runs, nine outs. Sounds doable. Right. Is that, the, is that the way that works? Hey, this is what this is the way I look at it. There's no clock in baseball. You gotta get the Hawks out. Moore starts with ball one, low and out. They they have to get the Hawks out. Make it hard to get you out. We are venturing into all new territory for Remington. This he career high is two and a third. He's pitched two full innings. Strike one at the knees. Sorry, two and two thirds against Elon. Ooh, that one was a little down. Yeah. 1-1 one, one is ripped foul over to the left, 1-2. and two. Still time to put together a comeback. At least build towards the next game. Uh, that has to be the key. You can't, you can't uh, stray away from having good at-bats. Right, we talked about that Friday night against Purdue, too. Swing and a miss. Moore chased a pitch low and out. Reese has cooled off. I just feel bad right field for him a bit Wilmus. now as his struggles continue. We'll go to Ben Wilmus. Keep having good at bats. Strike one, hard fastball on the outside corner. I think the thing that's impressed me the most with Remington is he's just filled up the zone. Yeah. I mean, he's been, he hasn't been middle of the plate, but he's been hitting his spots on, on either corner and getting ahead. Just off the plate away from Wilmus that time, one and one. And I think so, he's been all over in a positive way, all over the zone. Right, yeah, he, he's been basically whatever whatever zone or quadrant he's tried to hit, he's been pretty close to it. I see what you're doing here, John. Ball two. And so then when he comes, <laughs> but when then when he comes back to it, then he's been able to get the Hawkeyes to chase that. Now, again, in this case, he's he's behind, and Wilmus hasn't helped him. And so now see how that changes the at bat. Wilmus hits a ground ball right side. Council makes a play in the hole. Throw to first base. You gotta be kidding me! What a play by Council! On the run, fielded it. Spun and throw it and threw it from shallow right. Boy, I thought that ball was was through. I thought it was just going to be kind of that seeing eye, seeing eye bouncing single. But Council stuck with it all the way and then had to do the 360 and put the throw on target. And don't don't undersell the scoop there from Niels either. Yeah, backhand pick. Yes. Michael Seegers is up, squares to bunt, fastball outside. It's a great day for 
Michael takes down Main Street for strike one. Again, that's the changeup for a strike, so it's it's not a pitch you're going to go ripping at. Mm -hmm. The wind and the fire, same spot, fastball that time, and it's one and two. Michael looks to battle. One ball, two strikes, two outs, base is empty. The pitch from Remington. Off the plate outside. Say Minnesota's got their hands up, palms of the air. Where was it? Um, two balls outside. <laughs> it was out, folks. And it's been a ball all game, so I'm not sure why you'd be surprised at this point. 2-2 yeah. two -two to Seegers, even further outside. Full count now for Michael. Six balls outside, still a ball. <laughs> I'd watch out for the changeup here. It's been his best pitch, don't you think? It has been. He shows it as a strike, and the bottom falls out. 3-2, line drive into right. Hooking away, but caught on the run by Fitzgerald. He's having a heck of a game. He makes the play. Iowa goes down 1-2-3 in the seventh. Eighth inning coming up, 16-7 Gophers. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Oaknall is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknall is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknall.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance, because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Top of the eighth at Banks today. Gophers up 16 to seven in the series opener. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. Gannon Archer out for another inning of work. Archer's done a, a decent job so far today. He will enter, uh, or stay in the game rather, but enter the eighth. Facing four, five, and six. Jalen Adams throws a no-hitter for Iowa softball in a four to nothing win over Michigan State today. Excellent, another conference win for the softball team. Designated hitter, Ike Mazenga. Iowa wearing the gold pants, that's an interesting look. <laughs> I gotta see the guys roll out in gold pants. That'd be all right. Oh. The white tops for the softball players today. I mean, you put a black top with that though. Yeah, I, I mean, like I like the black and gold combo. Yeah, I'm all for it. Mazenga in the box for the Gophers. Archers worked ahead, nothing in two. Congratulations to Adams softball team. Good win. Some of that magic to get over here. 16 to 7, Gophers in the eighth. 0 2 pitch, swing and a miss, drop third strike. Kopp will have to throw it down to first. He will do so accurately That's for the first out. Look at Iowa women's Left basketball here. on Top about seven. the same time we'll be on tomorrow. Colorado, what do you know about the Buffs? Well, same team we faced last year in the same spot, so. I think it's the thing that's interested me was uh, teams are very much taking Caitlin Clark head on with comments. You know, just the whole 
uh, you know, the, the, the last round game uh, with West Virginia was kind of, you know, hey, we'll send her packing. And maybe you thought that was heat of the moment of, of hey, we just got in the tournament. But they kind of followed that up and they kept doing it. And, and Colorado was a little bit of the same way. Really? Uh, just with some of the comments of, you know, she's going to fall down and, and she's going to shrug her shoulders and do some things. And we can't let we can't let that affect us. And uh, just interesting life choice to, to, to poke. I mean, whatever your personality is and whatever you work, Colorado's a veteran team that, that plays a lot like West Virginia, except for maybe shoots it better. So that game will be uh, 230 tomorrow. And I game think, starts at two o'clock. Go yeah. ahead, John. Oh, I think, I think Iowa getting out of Iowa City will be helpful. You know, I just think there's there was so much pressure involved in that last game in Carver, and I think you make a great point. Just kind of leave that all behind for now. Three-zero pitch from Archer's in there for a strike. Three and one. Kind of get back to the to the, you know, to steal a phrase from from teams that completely overuse it, but the whole us against the world thing that it's just it's us and our bubble. Yeah, we got a lot of teams rooting for us, so I don't mean it that way, but but you just got to circle your wagons a little bit and and you know that it'll be hey it's just us you know now we don't we don't have to we don't have to do this for the 15,000 people here in the arena and we don't have to worry about oh we lost our last game in Carver and all those other you know the evil little little nibbles that come on your brain it's yeah. it's and, and you kind of saw that last year where you know Iowa played a really good game against Colorado and a really good game against Old Miss and kind of got it going a little bit once they got away from here Three balls and two strikes to Merrilla. And this is driven into right center, but Hochstorf tracks over. He's got it for out number two. Which one was the Louisville game, not the Old Miss game? No, there was Old right Miss in there. there. Played Old Miss. Yeah. yeah. Lou Louisville was the, uh, the Elite Eight game. And so Old Miss was the Sweet 16 game? So no, no, Colorado was yeah, 16. Yeah, Colorado was 16. So that's what I'm trying, trying to figure out. It feels like I have won too many teams in there, but I can't figure out where. Maybe they didn't play Ole Miss. Now, I gotta look. now you're going to look. Now i got to look. 16 to 7, I can look. <laughs> Two outs for Fitzgerald. Haven't got this guy out today. He's a triple away from the cycle. I like how you keep saying that, too, just to make sure. Just to uh, inform the audience, <laughs> this guy is double, a home run, a single. He walked, and... <clears throat> He scored every time he's been on today. No balls and a strike. Archer out of the windup. There's a fastball on the outside corner. There was no Ole Miss. Ole Miss beat Stanford. That's right. Who and, was the one seed, and right? And they got beat by. Okay, yeah. So yes. it was Georgia, Colorado, Louisville. I knew they upset somebody and was kind of a yeah. potential. Louisville must have beat them then. 0-2's oh, the count. The pitch from Archer. Roped foul. Out of play. You know, Iowa goes out there last year that beat Colorado by 10, beat Louisville by 14. You know, so played a little bit better after a, kind of another slugfest against Georgia here. Yes. And that's kind of, the game kind of turned out the same way. It got a little chippy toward the end. And... 0-2, inside, but a ball. Looked good from Archer, just off the plate. It's 1-2. and two. A picture on my desk of golfing with Kate Martin and Caitlin Clark. There you go. One two from Archer, hit on the ground to third. Tello backhands. He'll step, he'll throw long across the diamond the for the third, third out. A one two three inning in the top of the eight. 16 7 Minnesota. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to 
catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Oakdale's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oakdale is conveniently located near the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. And the Hawkeyes come to the plate in the bottom of the eighth, down 16 to seven after chasing Tucker Novotny in the second. The Gophers have used, uh, they're on their second pitcher since then. They've only used two guys. Well, even more importantly than that, I mean, Remington's thrown three innings, given up two hits, hasn't walked a guy. And you and I talked about that, just filling up the strike zone uh, with Thorstenson did a little bit too, but Iowa hit him. He's thrown more, Remington's thrown more innings than any other pitcher, and he's faced one less batter than the first two pitchers. Mm. Gable Mitchell leads off the eighth for Iowa. Squared to bunt, pulled it back, strike one. I mean, this is one of those spots where you just, all right, what, what are you going to try to do differently to generate some offense to get some action going? Because Remington is in a groove. Mitchell rips it to right. It'll drop for a base hit. Leadoff single for Gable. He continues to do a great job in the batter's box for Iowa. He's two for two today with a couple of walks. He's been impressive. I mean, just, you know, he, he's bounced around. He, he hit well enough early in the year. He moved up into the First top baseman, leadoff Andy spot. Nelson. That maybe didn't work out as well for him as we kind of joked early in the year that the leadoff spot was the, the jinx spot. Yeah. But um, since he's moved back down in the order, he's done a really nice job and just a steady presence. Top of the order for Andy Nelson. See if the Hawks can get the wheels turning. Mitchell at first base. Nelson takes right down the middle. And again, it's that, it's that changeup. That what's made Remington effective is the fact that he's been able to throw both pitches four strikes and not not swing and miss strikes, but actually throw them both for strikes, and then then he gets some help and chase after that. A one is outside. I, I think to to add to that point, John the. The first pitch changeup. That's what it's been nearly every time for him. Yeah, he's been he's been able to keep hitters off balance that way and um, do a nice mix with that. And, and again, find the zone. Another one, same spot. Andy just ha hasn't seen it well. This is a couple of at bats in a row that he's, he's got behind to Remington. God, I mean, you're talking about one of the one of the hottest hitters in the Big Ten. Just had a hard time getting on track here. One, two, tapped foul in the box. Saw that one and was able to at least fight it off as that ball was diving right to the, you know, right to just below his knees, but probably not a strike, but not one you can take with, with two strikes. Right, and that, that has been just a bit lower than the ones before it, so. Another foul ball by Nelson, he hangs tough. And that ball just kind of floats up right at the top of the zone and Andy able to go up and get that one. So good job finding the top and bottom of the zone. Now can he can he get a little bit of a payoff here? Iowa down nine in the eighth. Here comes the one two to Nelson. Into center field and down for a base hit. Off the big black Tiger Hawk in center. Back to back singles for the Hawkeyes in the eighth. Here comes Sam Peterson. Nobody out, runners at first and second. I mean, I, and I hate to say it with a guy hitting you know, 387, but love to see him take this first pitch because there's a really good, I mean, unless he's going to sit change up, but there's a really good chance that. 
first pitch change inside corner, strike one. You, you were on to it, John. He just fast pitched you there before you get your thought well, out. <laughs> but but I like that he took that one yes. in, instead of because you know that's you're going to get a better pitch than that to hit, and so just stick with it. A one, similar spot, but even further inside this time, so it's called a ball. Yeah, I mean, if Petey swings at the first pitch that that rides the inside black of the plate, uh, that's a it's probably five four three double yes. play. And we've, Ground ball. We've seen that parade. 1-1. One, one. Petey rips it to third, and it's through into the corner. Here comes Gable Mitchell. He'll score. Andy Nelson, he sees the red light at third. It's an RBI double for Sam Peterson. I would expect that to be a double, but, man, that was a ball that Jake Perry wanted no part of as he just went full bail mode, and the ball just zipped by him. Remington had done a nice job. We talked about his, uh, this was his career long of an outing. We'll see, now three sharp hits for the for the Hawkeyes. See if this is a chase or if this is a, hey, I just need you to settle in here and get me a couple outs. After allowing 16 unanswered runs, Iowa gets back on the board in the eighth, 16 to eight. Nobody out. Runners at second and third. Doesn't do any good to look back. It just tell me you didn't expect Perry to pick that up and start the double play. Uh, with the way today's game has gone, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I, he, he dropped to his. He, he dropped into a squat uh, position and tried to backhand it and just. Whoop. He 100% full bailed, and I still figured he was going to catch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured that's going to catch off the webbing. He's going to fire it to second, and, and it's hit so hard. We're going to we're going to roll a double play, but. All right, hold on. 16 to 8. Two in scoring position for Raider Tello and nobody out. Remington deals. Tello takes downstairs. Ball one. Raiders two for four today. Singled in the first, doubled in the second. He's got four runs batted in. Five and six would sure be nice. Outside, ball two. Chip away, one pitch at a time. Two zero, -oh. in there for a strike. Two and one. Raider making sure. Hey, can will you call a strike any further inside than that? Yeah. Answer's probably yes. Yeah. But you, you know you're trying to set where the boundaries are. Raiders skies it foul over to the right, and the count's even now at two and two. That The pitch before, the low and end, that's an exceptionally tough pitch for Raider to get around on and, and drive. Yeah, Raider probably wants it up in the zone and might have missed the pitch he wanted there, but change up, got away with it in the middle of the plate. Two, two, fouled back. Good hang, Raider. You know, he chased that one high, but... At least he got it. Yeah, you got up to it and you fouled it off. That was the important part. Nobody out in the inning. Peterson at second, Nelson at third. Remington looks in for the sign. He's got it from Hunt. Here comes the 2-2 two -two to Tello. Ground ball foul past Coach Bow at third. And you have six Hawkeye hitters with multi-hit games. And you're getting beat. You're getting beat soundly. Yeah. Eight runs feels like a good number to get. It's above Iowa's, you know, it's right around Iowa's average of nine per game. The 2 2. Raider hits it on the ground. Foul again. Every player but Council on the Minnesota lineup has an RBI. Every player in the Minnesota lineup scored a run. For those that like defensive games and pitcher duels, you turned us off in the second. <laughs> <laughs> Another 2-2 two -two to Raider. Popped it up. Right field. And Fitzgerald's got it for the first out. 
Yeah, that's uh, the downside of kind of going into protect mode there is Raider chased a couple pitches that were probably out of the zone up. He was lucky enough to foul off some of them, and we'll have the pitching change now with that out. Davis Kopp will be the batter, but a pitching change for the Golden Gophers. They lead it 16-8 to eight in the eighth. A couple runners on and one out for Kopp when we come back out of this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making health care better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Bottom of the eighth inning, Minnesota out in front 16 to eight. And the Gophers will go with a new pitcher, Thomas Gross, right-handed senior from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Three and two on the seasons in seven appearances. That's kind of impressive. Five decisions in seven appearances. A 9.26 ERA, 11 and two-thirds innings, 12 hits, 14 runs. Twelve of those have been earned, 11 walks, eight strikeouts. Opponents hitting 261 against him. So... So you're saying there's a chance. That batting order, but that batting average isn't that high, but it's the walks. It's the walks, yeah. I mean, you see that with a couple of the Iowa pitchers. The batting average is low, but you're you're adding to you're adding to the base runners. I mean, his whip is basically almost two, and so you're putting putting plenty of guys on there. Fastball is going to be 90. He's going to throw a change uh, curveball. I'm sorry, and a slider. Uh, again, kind of below below average command, especially on the spinny stuff. So. You know, if Iowa can hold the zone, continue to have quality at bats, you know, there's some there's some uh, there's some hits and runs still to be scored here. Davis Cop will get the first look at Gross, and Minnesota using just their fourth pitcher of the day after the Hawkeyes chased the starter Novotny in an inning and two thirds. All Minnesota since then. And Minnesota's used three of their four highest art, uh, ERAs in the bullpen. So yeah. meaning, meaning, haven't seen their aces. Yeah, meaning guys that you would think might yield some runs um, have not. And, and now, granted, their bullpen because Thorstenson, I mean, his ERA is 3.63. So you know, he and he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh on the team of the relievers in ERA. So, I mean, their, their bullpen is pretty good. Davis Kopp in the box. Iowa down by eight in the eighth. First pitch to Kopp. Strike at the knees. Remington has not been historically as good as the rest of them, and, mm -hmm. and he kind of shoved it at us today. Yeah. He was pretty good out of the Golden Gopher bullpen. 0-1 is chopped foul. Man, that had a magnet in on Cop's hands. Just kept coming in, 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 and Davis fouled it off. Yeah, and that's the the fastball is going to have some run. It'll have that arm side run and just keep leaking in on you. So if it starts inside, it's coming inside. Here's the 0 0-2 inside. Breaking ball. Two balls inside, people. Yeah. We're fortunate we've got the the equipment, but uh, two balls inside and still trying to break in towards the plate. Right. So. so it started even further inside. One, two to cop. Ooh, he took it for a calm third strike. Breaking ball high in the zone. And Davis is out number two. Yeah, unfortunately, you're... Uh, uh, your, your any chances of comeback can't mean you leave guys on second and third with, with nobody out and not score those guys. So 
need a big hit here from Kyle Huxdorf to kind of keep the keep the inning turning over. First pitch to Huck, blowing out. Kyle today with a couple of singles. Single would get Iowa a couple more runs. Two outs, runners at second and third. 1-0 pitch, the strike. Right down the middle. One one inside corner one and two mm. the pitchers are all Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer all of a sudden <laughs> one two pitch ground ball left side third baseman's got it he'll throw on the run and safe at first base pulled him off the bag Ooh, that's a close play. Uh, they might want to look at that. He, Coach Anderson immediately went to his ears. Now, it wasn't a matter of whether it beat him or not. It was a matter of did he pull his foot. And, boy, I don't know. We'll see if you get a good enough camera angle to, to overturn that. Good hustle from Huck to get down the line. Run did score down the line, so it's 16-9 to nine if it stands. We will see. Iowa out hitting the Gophers, <laughs> 13 to 11. And now if it, if you just look at that stat alone, you'd think, okay, either winning or within a run or two, but nope, down by seven. Yeah, that, that I think that's the, the, the more shocking piece of that whole equation is that it's not even, at this point, it's not even a tight game. If you look at those advanced stats you got pulled up right there, John, where did this game go so wrong for Iowa? Is there a stat that stands out, or are they just... Runner on third with less than two outs is part of it. Minnesota's four for four, Iowa's two for six. But funny enough, that happened, you know, Iowa scored three runs there when Raider Tello ends up getting the, the big hit uh, anyway to score all those runs. So part of that you can wash away, but... Uh, not really. I mean, again, it's because Minnesota's been louder. You know, eight two-out RBIs. Iowa has five, but Iowa's left seven runners on base. Minnesota's only left two. Mm -hmm. Got three double plays that Iowa's hit into, but Minnesota's hit into a couple now. So, I mean, again, I yeah, we we talk about putting teams away. I think seven to nothing after two in the affirmative and the positive is. You know that that's certainly enough to, with to Brody, win a game with Brody Breck on the on the mound. That's yeah. it's got to be a win. It just has to be. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, as as positive as I am, I can't sugarcoat that one. It, it's it, it has to be a win, and and the way it stands, it it doesn't look like it's going to be. And you know that's you know, marginally unacceptable, really. I mean, it, it, we're in week seven, and Brody's still winless. Not that he has a ton of defeats, but winless. Safe at first base after the review, he pulled the foot. There's six extra base hits for Minnesota, just three for Iowa. Uh, I mean, it's five doubles and a home run. Iowa has three doubles. You know, the home run, the home run was loud and important. But so was, so was pretty much, my guess is every double scored, guys. I don't think they had a double to lead off an inning. I think they yeah. they followed some free bases you're saying. and they, they pounded in extra guys. Now oh, there's one, I'm sorry, they have one double because he got thrown out at third. <laughs> That's the one double they wasted. Run scores for Iowa at 16 to nine. Here's Reese Moore, first pitch, swing and a miss. I mean, then you go to the third inning, there's a double with two RBIs, a double with two RBIs, a home run with two RBIs, a double with two RBIs in the fourth, a double with two RBIs in the sixth. So there's your five extra base hits that are 10 RBIs in the game. Ground ball, right side and foul. Nothing in two. So, you know, their hits have all been productive. 
All of them. Every single one of them. Yeah, every extra base hit except for the first one has been, has been so what, five out of six extra base hits have driven in ten runs. 0-2 oh, to Moore. Here's the pitch from Gross. Check swing, ground ball foul to first. Now the worst part from an Iowa perspective on that is, you know, that that double the double drove in like a walk and you know the double drove in a home run drove in actually the home run drove in a, a single but you know there were there was an, a walk a hit by pitch and a walk in that seven run inning and those guys all scored the o2 ripped into right and it will be caught right fielder fitzgerald sprinted forward he dove forward for it and caught it for the third out (laughs) couple runs for the hawks 16 to 9 minnesota back for the ninth after this is iowa baseball from Learfield. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Top of the ninth inning, the Hawkeyes will make a pitching change down 16 to 9 in the opener with Minnesota. Iowa going with the right handed junior from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Chaz Wheatley. Nine appearances with a 704 ERA, seven and two thirds innings, seven hits, six runs have all been earned, four walks, four strikeouts. Opponents knocking him around at a 259 batting average. 16 to 9, and the Gophers will send uh, 7 8 9 uh, to the batter's box. Okay, you ask, you ask last inning where where this got off the rails. You know, we kind of looked at some of those advanced stats and they were pretty close, so I went back to the scorebook and I'm browsing through there. Iowa pitching has walked or hit 10 batters, walked eight, hit two. Okay. Of those 10, nine have scored. So it, it's. It's timely hitting from from the Gophers, and they're hitting loud. So, you know, they've strung they've strung out 11 hits, which are great. But Iowa left a few of those guys on base. But Minnesota has left one walk, and actually that guy got erased on a double play. So that that's the only the only free base that hasn't scored got erased on a double play. Every other one in the game has scored. Mm. That's not that, good. That's that's the only stat you need, right? That that should well, yeah. I mean, that's even even if that's it, you know, it's tied. Yeah, it, it's a tie <laughs> game. So even if you just if you, if you cut out the free bases, you're ahead nine to seven. You know, they're they're Minnesota's five extra base hits that have driven in ten runs. You know, back in the in the sixth inning when Iowa gave up five, the the four guys that scored walked, walked, hit by pitch, walked, and doubled. Mm. Those were the five guys that scored. Wow. Wheatley fires a strike on the inside corner. It's two and one to Hokinson. We'll be back here tomorrow just after two o'clock. Two o two first pitch. Game televised on the Big Ten Network. Two one from Wheatley. Popped up foul over to the left. Two and two. Our broadcast coverage will start at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. Cade Obermuller to start. Need a good one from Cade. Boy, he's had a couple of pressure starts, hasn't he? He's had a couple of uh, need to perform starts. Two balls, two strikes. Wheatley delivers. Called third strike. High portion of the That's zone and a strikeout for Chaz. Boy, and knew it too. He was walking straight back to the dugout when he took that pitch. There was no doubt Hokinson got fooled on a good breaking ball and 
I'd say that was a that was Thank a hat run. tipper there. He just walked on back. Well, a really nice job by Chaz after falling behind two two and zero. Oh. Back in there. Okay, Sam Hunt, left-handed hitter. Another one. First pitch, swing and a miss. Neatly threw it by him. Again, following pattern, he's going to strike out. Every other. Yeah. He's uh, two for four today with two strikeouts. A one is outside. Now, surely you know just a bit outside, right? Uh, I've in major league, you, you can't possibly even if you've never I'm, watched. I'm the familiar movie, with the reference. Yeah, even if you've never watched the movie, you can't possibly not know that one. I, I know that one. Couldn't tell you at what point of the movie it comes in, but I know it must be in there somewhere. You you must be a big major league guy. That's the one you reference the most. That's the one I've watched the very least of. Well, all right, but let's think about it for a second. I mean, what do you expect me to reference? Caddyshack? <laughs> We're playing baseball here. I wonder I wonder if there's something that could be applied from that movie, John. <laughs> the, the, in this go, one today. the gopher needs to blow something up is what needs to happen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Gopher needs oh, to pop his head out man. from under home plate and blow something up right, right here pretty quick. Maybe we can get a ball to tip over and score here at the last minute. Rodney Dangerfield needs to come out and go, my arm. I think he broke my arm. Ooh. Wheatley hits Hunt. Chaz is all over the place at a bat. And let's see if we can prevent Short that free base from right. scoring. We head back to the nine out of ten free bases. That's what it is. In, in short, nine out of ten have scored. Prior to that one, yeah. Okay, he, so he, he's now eleven. We're so. pending. Yeah, pending the eleventh free base. Minnesota seven for ten with runners in scoring position. Again, they've just left two guys on base. They have pretty much rolled through everybody when they had an opportunity. He finally decided it hurt a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he took, I, it, took an eighty-nine mile an hour fastball right in the. Like the knee area, maybe a little bit above, maybe a little bit below, but man. It had to, had to sting a little bit. Larson is in the box. Wheatley comes set. And he fires the first pitch. Almost hit him at a magnet on the belt. Just inside ball one. Now Larson decided, well, I just saw what happened. There's no way I want to take that one Oof. in the ribs. Wheatley's 1-0 is right down the middle for strike one. Iowa got beat on Friday night last weekend at Purdue, 10-3. Bounce back with a couple of wins. 1-1 one -one is up and in for a ball. Ohio State 8-2 final over Purdue. Hmm. Buckeyes moved to one and zero in Big Ten play. Purdue one and three. Georgia eleven to two over number five Tennessee. That's good. Two one from Wheatley, driven into center. Huxdorf turns and he will look up and make the grab for the second out. If you recall last year, um, Iowa had a poor start to the conference season and then turn things around, losing series to Maryland and then Indiana. Yeah, you lost to, you lost to the, the teams that you ended up battling the, for the title. Mm -hmm. Matt Shaw tried to break windows Oof. in Carver with a couple balls. Yeah, I think he would have actually hit the f facility over there. I think he, he'd have come really close yeah. to the new wrestling facility. Now, that would have been interesting to see Tom and Terry come out and <laughs> wrestle him after he hit the building. He was a good player for Maryland. I'm glad he's a good player for some other pro program now. Like the Cubs, right? It's with the Cubs. Sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> We've already talked about them today. It's perfectly fine. Yep. Top of the order for the Gophers. This is Council. Chops it foul over to the left. We were talking earlier about Hawkeye Pitchers of the Year and Adam Major. And, well, Adam keeps having a good... A good development track. He might find himself, uh, might find himself at a major league level or at least AAA level at some point. 
Wheatley strikes out Council. Nice breaking ball, and Council's down on strikes for the third out. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Minnesota out in front, 16 to nine. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Bottom of the ninth inning, Iowa trailing Minnesota 16 to nine. It'll be Wilma, Seegers, and Mitchell coming to the plate. Iowa's last chance. It's just a Cooper to Gene punt return away from tying the game. Oh, John. <laughs> Was that bad form in this one? <laughs> oh, it took a long time to get over that <laughs> debacle. At that point, you just drop. It's not a fair game. It was not a fair catch. Well, Hawks need to come back tomorrow and, and figure something out. I, I have a feeling they'll have a nice blueprint from the staff on what it is that they need to figure out before they go to bed tonight. <laughs> well, we were we were on the bus last Friday night after uh, after that game, and uh, there were some uh, we'll coaching night, moments, perhaps. Right and so we'll uh, we'll see what coaching moments come out of this one, but. You know, every game is different. Uh, all losses are, I don't believe in a good loss, really. Uh, but I think there are a number of bad losses that you can experience. Uh, and this is not in a disrespectful way, but uh, the way that this game unfolded, this is con this would be considered a bad loss by the Hawks. Well, again, like we were talking about, you're oh, high strike there. You're you're ahead seven to nothing on Friday. The game's over. It's got to be over. A hundred percent of the time, the game has to be over. Uh, and it wasn't today. Oh, two to Wilmus hit him. And, and even worse was not only was it not over. I mean, you give up 16 consecutive runs on a Friday. Uh, that's just uh, I mean, well, impossible to imagine. Right. And I think in just a general sense, but with the the arms that are on this staff for Iowa, right. magnifies it. Yeah. I mean, you've you've been around uh, this program. I don't I don't think you've seen anything like what we witnessed today, before. No, for sure. To the tune of 16 in a row. Seegers is in the box. Wilmus at first base. I mean, you see ups and downs, and, and you know, I mean, last year the the uh, UIC game was was kind of that head scratcher of what the heck happened there. Uh, you know, so it it's not that any team is immune to those sort of things. I mean, heck, all around the country, there's been losses where you look at it and go, "What the heck was that?" Yeah. Uh, the problem for Iowa is there. There's some of those right now are uh, they're they're kind of piling up a little bit in places and. Seegers takes a high strike, two and one. As a North team, uh, you only get so many mulligans to, to use one of my golf terms, and you know we're we're probably getting we're we're getting there. Yep. Two one. Michael rips it to short, and it's off his glove. But it'll be good luck as he'll be able to pitch it to the second baseman for the force out. Yeah, I mean Ben Ben can't get moving there because. He goes and uh, he runs into a double play if, if he catches that. So he's got a double back and he should have caught it. Right, he should have caught it and, and 
But, you know, that, that ball looped just over Seeger's glove early in the game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to that point again, if Iowa, if Iowa wins every series 2-1, to one, I mean, you don't want to keep putting yourself in the hole on Friday, but you know, they'll be okay by the end of the year. 16-8 and eight probably doesn't win the Big Ten, but you're not going to be embarrassed. You're going to get to Omaha, and you're going to get a chance to do damage in Omaha. But, you know, there's days where you're like, okay, these guys can run off a whole bunch of games in a row. And then there's games where it's like, okay, man, this is... You can this, go the opposite yeah, way. Yeah, this is a big hill. And there's just some things that... Kind of make you scratch your head a little bit. We... Mitchell bunts it left side, foul. We've talked about it in in different pitchers, even in, in an inning. You know, how, uh, you, know, you know, batter out, batter out. Looks like the best thing ever. And then, you know, the next six or eight pitches, um, you know, aren't aren't located very well and, and get yourself in trouble and then give up a hit. And, and you gave up two runs when it looked like the inning was, was pretty much over. No balls and two strikes to Mitchell. Runner at first base with one out. Bottom of the ninth, down 16 to nine. Ground ball to second, backhand stop. This could be the ball game, and it is not with a poor throw over to first. Force out at second, Mitchell will get to second base as Minnesota just about turned a game-ending double play, which would have been the fourth, fourth of the game. And, but it's not. And it would have, would have felt about right, and... and I was about to say, you know, let, let's find something positive, and I thought I was going to get that ripped from me with, <laughs> with the double play because I don't really, I don't really like to sit here and pile on either and have that be, have that be the final, the final tone yeah. to it for the way the game goes because obviously we know, we're 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 around these guys a lot. We know the work that they put in and and that they do, and it's not lack of of effort. No. And it's not lack of talent. There's just there's something missing in the consistency level right now that, uh, you know, we, we've we've heard Coach Heller and, and Coach Sutherland go from, uh, you know, good cop bad cop, uh, you know, uplifting uplifting cop to uh, you know we we've seen all the ranges and, and coaches can only say so many things before the players have to go figure it out. Nelson is Iowa's last chance. Two and one to Andy. Coach Heller said it a couple times this year. I, I, I feel like the guys have turned the corner. I feel like we've turned the corner. And then a game like this kind of happens, and it's, uh, well, maybe not quite yet. We, two and two to Andy. We may have gone, we may have taken four right turns. Yeah, <laughs> and we've turned a couple of corners. Right in the same spot where we were in. Minnesota fans rise to their feet over to the left. Good contingent of them made the trip down from Minneapolis. 2-2 to Nelson. Ground ball to third. Long throw across the diamond, and that'll do it. Final score. Gophers take Gophers game 16, one, 16-9. Iowa's got to bounce back the rest of the weekend Iowa to win the series. Trying to even it up tomorrow with Kate Obermuller getting the start. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from the Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Golden Gophers take game one of the series over Iowa tonight, 16-9. to A high-scoring Friday night affair that uh, goes Minnesota's way after Iowa jumped out to a 7-0 lead after the second inning. Brody Breck threw three innings. He got the start, gave up five hits, seven earned runs. He struck out five, walked two. Jack Whitlock, Jack Young, Elliot Cadu Lanou, Zach Volker, Gannon Archer, and Chaz Wheatley all came in 
for the Hawks out of the bullpen. I'm selling my dunks. We gotta get rid. <laughs> gotta change something we, we to help. Gotta, we gotta take our measures, don't we? we? Gotta do our part. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, Tomorrow but, you're gonna be sitting on my left, John. And if if that happens, we might have to make a, a switch. Work two out of three in Purdue there yeah. when we needed that to happen. Yeah. But uh, in all seriousness, Iowa offensively probably did enough to win the game, John. Nine runs. Oh, 100. percent the interesting thing with the lineup though is you have six guys in a row that have multi-hit games, and you have three guys in a row in the lineup that didn't have a hit and so you kind of see a little bit of the issue there although Wilmus walked and got hit by a pitch everybody got on base but you, you didn't have the hits to kind of turn the turn that over in some of those spots and again you should have had the fourth double play there to finish the game you know, Iowa hit ground balls at inopportune times at Minnesota players and, and created some issue I'm not asking you to be uh, Coach Heller or Coach Sutherland, but if you were coaching a team right now of any sport, what what would your message be? I think you got to just start playing. You know, you, you got to get to a point of, you know, there was expectation. You just can't let, you can't get tied up in that part of it. Right now, you just have to be, you have to be baseball players, be athletes. They're, they're, they've all got that, so just go do it. Coach Sutherland is on his way to the press box. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from him right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Our try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Minnesota wins game one of the weekend, 16 to 9 over Iowa. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, uh, just your initial thoughts on that one tonight? Well, we'll get off to a great start, obviously, and, and Brody looked sharp and, and everything was, was going good. You get seven uh, early, um, maybe, a, a, you know, a couple more there that we probably had a chance to get, but you're feeling pretty good. And, and credit to Minnesota, man. They, they came back, they answered back the next inning. And tie it, I think at least five or six of those runs are with two outs, um, just big hits. And it, and really the story is is kind of twofold on the offense. It's they score 16 runs with 11 hits, but they have six extra base hits, right? And and I think out of all of the the art the run scoring hits, I feel like most of them were two run. Um, and, and that's what they did. They have three guys left on base out of 11 hits. You know, 16, 16 runs on 11 hits typically doesn't happen, but obviously we helped them. Some free base stuff, and then on our offense, just the three double plays. I mean, that was, that was those were big, and, and one we hit hard, but two, you know, just, just happens. And, and unfortunately, you look at 10 left on base, so you take some of those double plays. I mean, it's just too many, too many opportunities that we probably didn't cash in offensively. Um, you know, I didn't dislike our at-bats even when we were putting zeros up. We had chances, but again, two of those innings were ended with double plays, and, and we just maybe just didn't have a little bit of luck. So from an at-bat standpoint, I thought there were a lot of positives. But, you know, you score nine on Friday, you know, you're expecting to win that game. And unfortunately, um, to credit to Minnesota and their offense, they did a great job. But, you know, s- some of the same things just up and got us that, that, have been, that have been haunting us most of the year. John and I talked about it, uh, felt that if that th- Third inning, you know, if it were a you know, zero, obviously, in the top half, or, or maybe just a couple runs, but for it to come all the way back, that felt like the the massive turning point because you started a brand new game then, and and obviously, uh, yeah, all the positivity was wiped away really quickly, right? In the first two innings, you're feeling really good, you know, you knock their starter out of the game, you know, things are things are going your way, and and again, credit to them, and, and I don't have the two out stuff in front of me, but I feel like five or six of those runs were two outs, and we're a pitch away, I think a strike away a couple times, and we just couldn't couldn't get a finish, and and you know, I we all know this that that we 
the starting pitching just just hasn't been consistent, you know. And I know I, I'll go to bat for that guy who was out there tonight more than anybody. He puts in the work, you know. He's just being tested right now, and it's just just it's been a little bit uphill. And um, you know, it's just part of the game, and it's it's under, it's frustrating, you know, a lot of in a lot of different ways, just because you do put up nine. But at the end of the day, you know, similar to last weekend, you know, it's a quick turnaround. You got to forget about it. You get a play tomorrow, and you just got to answer back and and hopefully Cade gives you a really good start and offensively we just kind of continue to do what we're doing um and that's all you can do and it's it, you got to wipe it away as quickly as possible and and um that's that's the greatest part about baseball you generally don't have to think about them too long you, you, you get to get another game really quickly and that's that's kind of the mindset we need to take well we'll let you begin that process now coach thanks for your time we'll see you tomorrow thanks john associate head coach marty sutherland on our post game show from Dwayne banks today Minnesota wins it 16 to 9. That'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball this evening. Game one of the series goes to the Golden Gophers. We'll be back tomorrow, first pitch at 2 o'clock on the Hawkeye Radio Network. Kate Obermuller gets the start for Iowa, trying to even the series tomorrow afternoon. For my great board op down the line, Michael, excellent job today, Michael. Thank you very much. My color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Banks this evening. Minnesota wins it 16-9. to Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye, but some are a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with a new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.